This music is not a part of the video. I just thought it was funny. Oh well. <laughs> All right. Um, Burgard, thank you for the thank you for the four months. Um, no, that music was not a part of that video. I just thought it was cute and funny. Um, do you hear him? Could you hear him? Yeah. Okay. Well. We'll see if that continues. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to podcast number 29. Today we are talking to Dr. Will. Thank you for the sub for the year. Holy crap. Um, today we're talking to Dr. Sebastian Alejandro Echeverri. Um, shut up, Leonard. Thank you for the year. Um, big deal. He's a doctor as of last night. Um, he had his PhD defense yesterday. His defense was passed and he he uh, received his PhD yesterday. Um, his defense was at 1 p.m. EST and now he's a doctor. So sick stuff. Um, so we're, we're talking to him. We're his first science comm piece as a doctor, I think. Um, and he's super, super cool. Mass, thank you for the t 11 months. Um, I appreciate that. You're so close to the bird. It's crazy. Um, Sebastian studies um, spiders. He studies the relationship between... Well, he studies visual ecology. So he studies how, um, how animals see the world, uh, specifically invertebrates, specifically spiders, um, how they see color, how they use uh, motion and color to communicate with each other. Um, his... Hellcat, thank you for the $10. I love spiders. I'm so glad that you love spiders without the kappa. Um, speaking of the donations today, we're raising money for uh, Xerxes Invertebrate Conservation, or Xerxes Society for Invertebrate Conservation. Um, they're an international organization. They focus on invertebrate conservation. They do a pollinator conservation program. They do endangered species conservation, and they work to reduce pesticide use and impacts. They do their own research. They support other researchers. Payback, thank you for the tier one. Um, so that's who we're raising money for today. Uh, they're really, really powerful advocates for, for invertebrates, and we know we've talked about it on the stream before. Spoon... But the $20, thank you so much. Yes, it has to be spiders. Sebastian is a wonderful person to have on the podcast because he's very passionate about the fact that science and spiders are for everyone, uh, despite the public maybe not thinking that about either of those things. So he's going to be great to talk to today. He may even show us some spiders today. Beej, thank you for the 14 months. Um, so we're going to talk about his research. His PhD research was about, uh, well, I, we're going to have him explain it, but I think it was about, um, jumping spider courtship rituals and how, how jumping spiders see each other and how they use color and movement and whatever. So we'll learn a bunch of cool stuff about spiders and hopefully change a lot of your minds because I know a lot of you are hesitant about them. A lot of people are hesitant about spiders. You can go ahead and do hashtag ask if you have a question. I'll be reading questions to him throughout the screen. Felix. Thank you, Balex. It's been 13 months. Oh my gosh. 
Um, I'll be asking questions throughout the stream. Uh, feel free, yeah, feel free to do that. Um, if you have the means to donate to, to the organization, that's wonderful as well. Uh, invertebrate conservation needs a lot of support and needs a lot of representation because they get left out a lot when we talk about conservation, but they're so important. Tony Allen, thank you for the 10 months. So that's the plan for today. Am I missing anything? There will be a quiz at the end of the podcast. Do you guys know how the quiz works? Um, Ram, thank you for the five dollars. Five bucks for our eight-legged friends. I appreciate that. Um, quiz at the end of the podcast. Whoever gets the most right, the fastest, uh, wins the quiz. If you're not subbed to this channel, then you get a gifted sub to my channel. If you are already subbed, then you get a gifted su gifted sub to the channel, to a channel of your choice, or um, I will donate an extra five dollars to Xerxes. Okay. Roshton. With fifty dollars. All right, let's get it going. You said spiders are lovely. I agree, and I'm glad that you think that. Dev with the Twitch Prime, thank you so much. Okay, um, let's take a. Am I missing anything? I feel like I haven't done a podcast in forever just because we didn't have one last week. Am I missing anything? Thank you for the bits. Seems good. Okay, cool. Um, think we're good. Spider time. Okay. I'm going to go back into this. I'm going to play this for a minute or two. Then I'm going to call Sebastian up and we should be good to go. I'll see you in a couple minutes. Champion, thank you for the tier one. Lime, thanks for the two months. Titterman with the five dollars. He said, what's the most popular job for spiders? Web designer. Cloud with the ten dollars. Whoa. Uh, yeah. It'll probably help. <laughs> Wait, let me know if it's... Okay, we're good. We're up. Okay. Do you want me to chat? Do you want me to turn them down or is the volume good? Okay, I see myself on chat, on your stream. I nice. Mean. Good. Yes. It's oh, oh, the the time. Okay, I can't watch it because the time delay does mess me up. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Don't. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't try to watch my video. <laughs> um, well, I was. To, I was gonna watch chat. Oh, but, that's uh, hard that's too. Not happening. Yeah, that's yeah. That can be kind of tough as well. Turn it down. Okay, are we good now? I turned it down a little bit. Turn it down by fifteen or twenty percent. Are we set? Perfect. They're saying new doctor. Yes, I said that yes. in the intro. Congratulations, what a huge Thank you. Thank you so much. Hours it's been for you. Yeah, it's uh <laughs> the the roller coaster of not just emotions but just like energy. Yeah. Cuz I had been up for all night preparing for my defense. Mm -hmm. And then I defended it. I was up on like that adrenaline and then I slept for a full 12 hours. So nice. I'm really glad we're talking today and not yesterday. Oh, for sure. Good. I'm glad we caught you at a good time. And I said, I think, is this, your first, this is your first science comm thing yes. as a doctor? That's so cool. Yes. You guys are Exclusive so first interview with uh, Dr. Echeverry. <laughs> wow, that's so sick. Um, so I gave a brief introduction about you, about, about what you research. Um, I mentioned that you now have your PhD and I did a short intro on Xerxes. We've raised a hundred dollars already for, awesome. um, for Xerxes. Could you tell Thank them... you everyone so much for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, could you introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about the organization before yeah, people keep yeah, donating? 
Uh, so my name is Sebastian Alejandro Echeverri. Uh, I'm a just finished, I, I am used to saying I'm a grad student. I am a PhD uh, in um, visual ecology. So I study how animals talk to each other. And in particular, I'm really interested in visual communication. So how animals use dance and color and pattern to communicate. Um, I'm based at the University of Pittsburgh, so I guess I just finished there. Uh, I'm a Colombian American. I came here when I was two. And yeah, uh, the Xerxes Society is, I think, one of the few, if not the only main organization that focuses on conservation of invertebrates, so animals without a backbone. And the reason that I chose them um, was because there is scientific evidence that when people donate, those donations to um, to conserve animals go to really just a select few species, you know, pandas, the big fuzzy sure. mammals. Mm -hmm. um, and those animals are wonderful, but they are a small, tiny subset of all the animals that really need our attention and our care and our donations. And invertebrates in particular, because people often have either cultural views that are negative towards them or have had bad experiences or just don't know a lot about them, uh, they're gonna be less likely to find a way to help those animals, even though they are the vast majority of life, both by number of individuals and number of species on Earth, but also that they are these critical parts of our ecosystem that we um, aren't fully aware of. And a lot of them are at risk in part because there's not a lot of money, so there's not a lot of money to study their populations. And so sometimes people will discover a species and they'll only find a few of them because their environment has been so affected that by that time, there's not a lot left. So Xerxes Society is the one that I know of. They do a lot of work, particularly for, with butterflies, but they help all invertebrates across uh, the world uh, and specifically seek out money to give to groups um, and they also have their own scientists that monitor populations and try to implement um, implement conservation strategies for those really wonderful animals and again my favorite animals how could i not support them yeah thank totally. you everyone by the way who's already donated please yeah. let's get the money in for this group i'll make it i'm a yearly donor for these guys but i'll make okay. another one after today just to join in with y'all Cool. That's awesome. Cloud with the with the five dollars. We're at one hundred and five dollars. Um, thank, thank you. Someone you in chat said Spider Man in the background. Also his shirt. <laughs> Huge Spider fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. This is not an accident. I am from Forest Hills, New York City. Okay. Which, if anyone's a Spider Man fan, that is the neighborhood that Peter Parker is from. I did they not know that. They filmed the um the Sam Raimi movies like like five or 10 blocks from my house. Whoa. Uh, and like, so Forest Hills has always been like a Spider-Man, like they're shot in that movie. I'm like, oh yeah, that's the grocery store on Austin Street. Like I know where they're filming that. That's so um, cool. But I've always found this, had this like really fun connection with the character with even before I got into spiders at all. And then, uh, especially with the most recent movie, the or the, I guess, second most recent now, the Spider, Into the Spider-Verse movie. Yeah. <laughs> There's a shot. Um, it, spoil, I guess, no, I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen it because it's like the best Spider-Man movie, go see it. Uh -huh. There's a point where they refer to Peter Parker as like a 27-year-old graduate student from Queens. And I'm like, oh no, I'm a 27-year-old graduate student from Queens. You're uh, <laughs> But then also getting to see like Miles Morales and like a brown-skinned Spider-Man yeah. who goes to specialized public high school in New York City. Like, I don't know, there's a lot of other characters that I love. That's cool. Uh, no, that I, did, like, I that, saw that one. I don't yeah. remember when I watched that movie, but I do remember liking it. Um, potato, potato with five dollars. Indy with ten dollars. Raptor with Thank you. ten dollars and eleven cents. Yes. Raptor said for the spiders and congrats to the new doctor. Wonderful. Thank you, Raptor. Um, so you said before you got into spiders. So how how yeah. how did you get into spiders? Yeah, it's a story. So when I was an undergrad, I wanted to be a scientist. Like I was into uh, science and animals in general, but uh -huh. like. I wasn't particularly like, I wasn't scared of spiders, I wasn't afraid of them, but I wasn't super into them. And when I was applying for graduate school, um, actually in an interview with a lab, uh, with a, the head of a lab, um, he was like, oh, let me tell you about this new research that I'm like coming up with. And he just shows me a video of a jumping spider dancing. Uh -huh. Like the ones that you saw in the, the pre-roll for this. And it was the first time I had seen anything like that. 
Yeah. And I literally stood up in my chair and said, oh my god, this is amazing. I need to know more about these animals. That's Because uh, I'd seen jumping spiders, like, vaguely. You know, they're, they're small. So, like, they just, little spider hopping around, whatever. It was mm-hmm. cool. I, like, didn't think about it. But when you see them up close and you get to, like, <laughs> you can tell that they're, like, looking and thinking and watching things kind of like we do. Mm-hmm. It, it's a magical experience. And, like, that was the moment. It was literally that. And then I, was, I got lucky enough. I got into that lab and then I started my PhD. And so from jumping spiders, which got me into spiders in general, uh, man, now I'm just, I, I like love all of them. Cause every, there's so many different kinds. Every time you meet a new spider, it's like, it does completely different things than the other one. Like there's so much diversity in, in like, not just how they look like, but like what they do, how they catch food, how they live their lives. So much fun. Yeah. So was your PhD defense, was it about the courtship dances in jumping yeah. spiders? Yes, that's right. So the my, I guess a general uh, idea of my defense is I'm really interested in how animals get each other's attention when they are trying to talk to each other. Okay. Because this is a really obvious, so this, I'm going to say something that's super obvious, but like if I wanted to show you a, let me pick it up and get one. I want to show you a really cool spider. I have to both show you the spider and you have to look at it. And like mm-hmm. this is facilitated by the fact that we are both looking Like, we're looking at our laptop screen, I'm showing you the picture. Mm -hmm. But there's this problem in animal communication of, like, okay, but, like, what if I hold it this way, what about that? Like, there's a lot of behaviors that animals have to do in order to actually, like, get a message across. Mm -hmm. And for jumping spiders, it's super hard because their vision, as you might have guessed, is super weird. Um, Okay, here we go. I got a model. Oh my so gosh. this is uh, so this is my felt Habernatus pyrethrix. That's this is a species that I study. That's so cool. Yeah, no, I got this specially commissioned because oh, I was I like, I, I need this after I published my first paper. Um, oh. So they have different multiple eyes. Um, most spiders have eight eyes. Some have fewer. Jumping spiders have eight. Uh, uh-huh. Six of them are big enough for image forming vision. And their eyes aren't compound eyes. They work like our own eyes. They are like a camera, single lens, single image. But since they they have so many eyes, they've actually been able to evolutionary specialize different eyes to see different things. Mm-hmm. So the two big primary eyes, the puppy dog eyes that everyone loves about these guys, those are the only ones that can see in color. Oh. Um, the eyes on the sides of their heads and on the back are actually black and white, and they're really good at motion detection. But that means that there's this really big problem. This male is super colorful. His colors help him in courting the female in his dance. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if she happens to look away from him, he's now in black and white. And so the the question that I was trying to answer is, okay, this is a huge problem. How do these animals solve it? Yeah. What do they do? Do the males, are they always like kind of running in front of the female being like, hey, 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 hey. (laughs) Or are they doing something with their dance that's like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, and the short story is that they, they do run towards where the female's looking a little bit, but they, they, they have this part of their dance where they're waving their arms like this. Yes. And just like you might wave to get someone's attention across the room, that is a really good way to get a female to turn around and look at you. I see. She can still, if, so if the female's facing away, so a jumping spider right now could still see all of my screen because of these eyes on the back of their head. That's so that crazy. wrap around. Yeah. And so he's taking advantage of her wide, like, peripheral feed of, field of view uh-huh. and waving his arms, which, since it's not, it's a motion type of information and not uh, color, she can still get that. And then he can, she says, oh, now she's looking at me. Let me then show off uh, some of my wonderful coloration. Got it. Very cool. Yeah. I didn't know that about, about the color. That's so interesting. Oh, yeah. Their their vision is really weird. The, oh my god, the way they see color too. So as a quick diversion, this isn't something research that I did, but this group of jumping spiders in particular, this is oh, oh all right, jumped away. Uh, this is the genus Habronotus, uh-huh. which is in North and South and Central America. Um, they are the common name is the paradise jumping spiders because they are like birds of paradise, super diverse. All the males are like really elaborately ornamented. And they do all these dances, um, but they have evolved a unique way to see color, especially particularly to tell the difference between red and green. Mm-hmm. So most animals that have color vision, like us, 
Um, we have three types of photoreceptors in our eyes. We have one that's sensitive to red, one that's sensitive to blue, one that's sensitive to green. Mm -hmm. And then we, when we look at something, we just say, okay, how much of this am I getting? How much of that am I getting? How much of that am I getting? And then we compare between those amounts. And that's a really rough estimation of how humans see color. Okay. Um, jumping spiders only have two types of photoreceptors, or at least Habernatus jumping spiders. Okay. There's other groups that evolved it differently. They have ultraviolet and green. Okay. So they should only be able to tell the difference between ultraviolet colors and green colors. And there should just be like a spectrum in between. But what they've done is they have a way to tell colors apart through deduction. Okay. So they have a red lens over part of their eye, of which their eye is like, it's not like a ball. It's like a... It's like a, a tube. Okay. So like the lens, or actually the lens would be here, and then it tapers off to the back like that. They have a filter over part of their retina that only lets red light through. And the green sensitive photoreceptors behind that are like very slightly sensitive to red. Mm -hmm. Like they'll, they'll like get it a little bit of the time. And so the spider's brain has figured out, okay, all the green receptors behind this filter if I ever get any signal that they are receiving light, that means that the light is red. Huh. And that is how they tell the difference between the color green and the color red. Wow. It is incredibly inefficient and silly, but evolution sometimes does not care. <laughs> it's it's crazy to hear about how like complex it is for such a little thing. Oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. They, their heads are super like it's all eyeballs in there. Um the so the eye the main the primary eyes extend like halfway to the back of their head oh my god and it's like the main thing constraining their head size um you'll see there's some jumping spiders that have adapted to have like really tiny narrow heads especially the ones that um mimic ants or the ones that get very flat mm -hmm. and they're that basically the limit on that is the tube of the primary eyes uh because like it, if you make it smaller then you can't really you know you won't have space for your eyeball yeah. um it's all eyes so their head is all eyes and brain basically and then all the like other organs pretty much are in the abdomen so lugs most of your digestion heart reproductive organs all that here got it huh yeah. um okay well we've talked a lot about jumping spiders somebody asked where smk asked what is your favorite spider fast like <laughs> um it's really hard to pick because there's fifty thousand different types of spiders and they do really cool things yeah um okay i just did a thesis on hibernatus pyrethrix so like maybe them okay but there are other ridiculously good jumping spiders um there's mexagonus quetzal which is um oh god i, I will type it in chat uh mexagonus uh, Spider Day Night Live in chat, just put that species name in there. Google it. It's okay. outstandingly beautiful. Chat, can you spam it for me? Thank you. Yeah, that's not. Uh, that that stuff. spider it was, there's not a lot known about it, but it has like a rainbow across its arms. Oh, um, whoa, what yeah, the heck? Yeah, 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 yeah no, you not, that's now you know why I love that. So, like, less, I've been. West tip $50. <laughs> thank you so much. This no, is crazy less. looking. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa! Look at this thing. Mexicanus quetzal. Yeah, they're they're beautiful little jumping spiders. It's so really hard cool. to pick. Cause there's like so many wonderful like uh, I could just give you species names, but we'd be at this for a while. But jumping spiders aside, it's a lot easier for me to pick um, because I, maybe I know less about them. But there's some jumping spiders, I mean, some other spiders that I have here that we can meet maybe later on that are some of my favorites. Oh, um, those great. are the Lyphisteid trapdoor spiders. So these are yeah. one of the most ancient spiders. And by ancient, I mean they are more, every other spider is more closely related to each other than any of them are to the Lyphisteids. Um, these are the, their armored trapdoor spiders is another common name. They are basically like the most um, ancestral or the spiders that we think are closest to the earliest spiders. 
Um, and so they have like really weird things that, that other spiders don't. They have actually segments on their abdomen mm -hmm. that are like armored. Uh, they have their spinnerets on the bottom of their abdomen. They, they look really weird. And I actually have two. I have two uh, in my collection. So we oh. can actually try to get to see one of them. Um, we will have to like lift up their trapdoor, but we, we can even try to feed one. We'll see if they're hungry. And if cool. not, we can peek inside. How many, uh, they're, they're just really wonderful. <laughs> how many spiders do you have? Uh, I have around, uh, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oh thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I have 19 right now. That's a lot. Uh, yeah, no, well, there's, there's, there's just, there's, there's so many. They're mostly so tarantulas. Many. Yeah. They're mostly tarantulas. A few, the two trapper spiders. Ooh, I have a purse web spider, which you won't be able to see. Okay. Because they, the way they live, but they are also super weird. Um. Yeah, it's the, the tarantulas are really easy to keep a lot of them because they don't require a lot of like maintenance yeah. for the most if you pick the right species. So it's really easy to like get up on those. I'm actually low on jumping spiders because I haven't like gone out in the field or anything in a while. Uh -huh. um, but I'm hoping to find a few if I can find some local species for outreach events and stuff. Cool. So all my spiders for the most part are like my outreach uh, employee employees i ambassadors, guess ambassadors uh, sure yeah, yeah ambassadors so there's a couple in particular that are really nice about being handled and stuff and so yeah. we'll get to meet some of those um and then others are more for uh watch don't touch kind of kind of sure. pets but cool yeah um, I, I just like having spiders in my life it's fun yeah for sure leonard with uh five dollars balex with fifty dollars botox hundred dollars that's what i'm talking about thank you guys so much this is amazing three hundred and thirty five dollars and ninety seven cents thank you guys so much no! um that's quick huh? oh. <laughs> Um, okay, let's let's answer some more of chat's questions. One of them was, "Are you Spider Man?" Well, we don't. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> um, like, don't. Are you gonna tell anyone? Like, low key, <laughs> don't tell anyone. All right. Like, I don't know. Um, it might be. Okay, these are all about Spider Man chat. Okay. Um, no, I, I can tell Spider Man too. I've written <laughs> an article about the superpowers that spiders have that Spider Man also has. Like that's what's up on the wall right there. It's an Can article you talk on the about that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so the really cool thing, one of the reasons I love Spider-Man and I love spiders, is because almost all of Spider-Man's superpowers are things that real life spiders can do, but the real life spiders can almost always do it better. Okay. So Spider-Man can jump uh -huh. really well. Jumping spiders can jump easy. Spider-Man can shoot webs. Um, out of either his wrist through a device or whatever, various versions of Spider-Man who shoot webs. There's a spider called a spitting spider, which is um, I one that unfortunately passed away before we could talk today, oh. but they uh, actually have evolved their fangs into like little spit cannons mm. and they spit a combination of venom and web. Holy cow. And it's so fast that you need like a hyper fast camera to, to see it. Yeah, it's a spitting spider. Um, Let me see if I can find a video for that. They like spray it in like a zigzag, and it paralyzes, glues their prey down, and then also um, kills it. And so oh. they have hyper effective uh, uh, web shooters. Um, and the really cool thing that I found out when I was studying the spider is that they are um, one of the few spiders that's like really good at living in like dry cluttered environments so things that you might find in like a in um places human affected places like yeah they might uh, garages and stuff like that and they've been found in like in new york inside buildings so like for me i really like the idea that like peter parker just got his spider powers like okay what can i do sees a spitting spider and is like ah i can build a web shooter like gets that idea that's sick. not canon but my head canon uh so they those are really cool you've got okay now i'm actually at the oh okay yes so one of the things if you played any of the um the spider-man games uh there's an ability where he like shoots two webs and like launches himself forward mm -hmm. it's a so he like slingshots with his web to travel really far mm -hmm. there is a spider um let me get the species name for you uh it is 
Uh, so it's the triangle weaver, uh, okay. Hiptiodes cavatus. I can also type that in chat if, if you're curious. I'll just say um, triangle there's weaver. Hiptiodes cavatus. Yeah, here we go. Uh, they have a web, and what they do is they have, they're like they hold it like really tense, and then when something um, lands in their web, they release it, and they actually slingshot forward into their web. At, uh, I believe it's a higher acceleration than what uh, I think, like, the the record is for human acceleration without passing out in a jet plane. Oh, my god! So gosh. they go so fast forward um, that, like, no Superman or Spider-Man or no human could, like, normally withstand that. And, like, so, like, anything a, Sp a Spider-Man could do, spiders could do better. There are even powers that, like, spiders have. That like would make great adaptations for Spider-Man, and like maybe it'll come up. But there's um, there's a type of pelican spider or assassin spider. They have these like their their jaws are like really wide, and what they do is they they lock them open, and then they Holy tense. Cow, they does, like pull on them. This does look like a pelican. What the heck? Yeah, it actually and looks what, like a pelican. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the same. They have a they they so like their head has like evolved to, like be really tall to fit these really long jaws. Yeah. Um, and some of them can, like, because they they te they can hold and like store energy. They could be they're basically like pulling on a, a spring, and they release it, and those jaws snap forward in some species, and it is one of the fastest movements by an animal. Full stop. Wow, that's so crazy. I've never yeah. seen a spider that looks like this. It's See, that's that's, that's the cool. That's why I love spiders. Cause yeah. like every other day, I'm like, I've never seen a spider like this before, and I'm yeah. just like on Twitter, and I'm like, this is amazing. Okay, we've um, had we've had a ton of donations come in. I've been meaning to read them. Um, so Tano with with ten dollars, I think I may have already said that one. For once with twenty five, Botox with three dollars, Spoon with thank ten, you. Zach with twenty, Shiv with fifty, Zoya with great. five, Street with twenty, and Balex with another forty eighty nine. So we hit our five hundred dollar goal. We're at five hundred twenty dollars. Um, thank amazing. You guys so amazing. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is awesome. Yeah. And I've, I've, guys, I say this every time because I don't want anyone to feel bad if you don't have the means or you don't feel like donating. Being here to watch it is just, is really, really important too. Um, I said it in the intro. We're here to change a few people's minds, hopefully, about spiders and talk about them. So I appreciate you guys being here. As is Tito with $10. Thank you so much. Um, and STE with $10. Uh, so, this is our first donated question. I, I usually give these ones priority. Um, ST asked, what are the key differences between spiders and tarantulas? That's a great question. Um, do we have any? Uh, let me see if I have some pictures of the two. So the tarantulas are a type of spider. They are um, within the group uh, Theraphosidae, I believe. Mm -hmm. But there's basically two types of big categories of spiders. There are the... Gosh, what are the, the, the Araneid spiders, which are sometimes called true spiders, but there's no good common name for them because they're all spiders. Mm -hmm. But these are spiders that are kind of like what you'd expect. Um, they spin webs. They're small-ish. Um, they don't live super long. And then there are tarantulas and other spiders in that... Uh, now now this is embarrassing because now I'm blanking on the... It's uh, Theraphosis are just tarantulas, but there's an entire other okay. thing that covers a lot of them. Other types of spiders that are, um, we think, similar to their uh, what uh, ancient spiders looked like when they first evolved. They're mm -hmm. kind of heavy-bodied. They got the thick legs. They're usually slower, and they can live much, much longer. Um, they also have four uh, lungs on their abdomen, while most normal normal spiders have two. Um, but tarantulas, in particular, because I said there's tarantulas, and then there's the rest of that group. Mm -hmm. uh, tarantulas in particular are known for um, their hairiness, mm -hmm. so they are fuzzy spiders. They're, yes. They are big, fuzzy, heavy-bodied spiders. That's okay. kind of the, the categorization for a tarantula. Okay. Um, uh, and um, they, they have, well, I guess a lot of spiders have special pads on their feet, but tarantulas have some more elaborate ones that lets them climb things despite being very heavy. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have... We're gonna meet today a, a jumping spider and at least one tarantula. So you'll get to see a little bit of the differences in their body shape. That's awesome. um, I can at least show 
So I like to start with, we're just going to show pictures of spiders for now, and then when we can go work up to real spiders. Um, so this is a, a tarantula. You know, you've, you've seen these before. These are some of the Aphonopelma species that we have here in North America. Mm -hmm. Big, heavy spiders, big fangs. Oh, also, that's the other thing. They're, the way their fangs work um, is different between the Araneids or the true spiders and then the rest of uh, the tarantula-like spiders. Mm -hmm. My gallimorphs, that's what it is. You could have made up a word and we would have believed you, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Not y'all can check me on this. I mean, I'm, there, I I know more about certain types of spiders than others, so there's I may make a mistake. That's totally fine. Um, their fangs swing down, uh -huh. uh, like a pickaxe. Okay. And then uh, other the other group of spiders, the true or normal spiders, um, their fangs swing in sideways, so they're okay. pinchers. Uh -huh. Um, and that you can see that in like how they bite things. So a tarantula will rear up and bite down. Mm -hmm. And then um, a jumping spider, for example, it'll open its jaws wide and pinch shut. Got it. Yeah. Um, Shiv tipped three different donations, but 130 in total. Yo! Um, and Abe with $20. Thank you. We had 700. Um, so amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Guys. Thank you. Um, I'd love to get more questions because I know I'm, I'm rambling. So feel yeah, free to like cut me off. I, I want to get through as many as we can. There are lots of questions here. Okay. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. Let me find the guy. There's so many Spider-Man questions. This is so funny. Um, Cam, um, I'll I'll link my article. I can I can link the article in chat, and y'all like it'll answer at least some of them. <laughs> okay. Um, um, Max asked, "What are some of the myths about spiders that people misunderstand?" I'm sure there are plenty. Oh, yeah, that is a great question. Um, I would say the biggest myth about spiders is that they are dangerous to people. Um, I just posted the link to the article in chat. Nice. But there you go. Though it does vary where you live in the world, um, the vast, vast majority of spiders that you meet in your life will be physically unable to hurt you in any way. and even more will just be unable to hurt you like in any way that you would remember after a week. Okay. So spiders, almost all of them are venomous. There are very few spiders that don't have venom. Um, but spider venom has evolved for the purpose of killing the things that the spiders eat. Mm -hmm. And there are no spiders in the entire world that eat humans. And so a mammal our size compared to a spider, they know they are smart enough to know that a skyscraper walking around, mm -hmm. like imagine, put yourself on the spider's eye. You are downtown, you have a sword. This is really good for things your size. Uh -huh. And then a skyscraper just starts walking around. You're going to know that your sword probably won't do much. Yeah. And so spiders will only often bite as absolute self-defense, like if yeah. they're being squished. Mm -hmm. um, and most often they just really want to get away because they know their venom doesn't work. There's no reason to kill you. Venom is really hard to make, like physiologically. Mm -hmm. um, like it takes a lot of the energy of the spider and it just doesn't work on you. Like there's only two species in the entire United States that have venom that is strong enough that if, if you were bit, you'd have to go to a doctor. Those are the black widow and the brown recluse. Mm -hmm. And then literally 99.9, .9, it's either 9.8 or 9.9 percent of species that live here, and we have like over a thousand in the United States at least. Um, their venom just doesn't do it. You get like a little bump, yeah, and you're like, ow, and then a week it's gone, and you're like, well, what happened, right? Uh, so yes, yeah, the, the fact that the, the idea that they're dangerous, I would say, is the biggest one. Uh, right. they really are, and even black widows, uh, there's a really nice video. They don't want to bite you. Like, there's a video of researchers who need venom from the Black Widow. Yeah, and like can't get it. And they have to like take the spider, hold it down, and like start like pushing on it with like a it's like a, they use like a Q-tip or something, but just like squeezing its head. Yeah. And it's like, fine, I'll bite. But like the spider knows. The spiders are smart. They're not gonna crawl into your mouth. Like that's a a cave of something with teeth. Like they you, there's smell of like dead food in there. They're not gonna do that. Okay. They are smart animals that are trying not to die. They know how to do that. Um, and 
there have like even even of like black widows and brown recluses most of the time they bite and they don't even inject venom because they can choose whether or not to do that mm -hmm. uh, and there haven't been any like deaths or anything from that in i think like what 30 years or something like that like even the most deadly spider in the entire world the sydney funnel web the last recorded death i think was like 1985. oh like, you just go to the doctor and the doctor's like okay yeah well we have the anti-venom and then you're fine yeah smk thank you for the 20 dollars um, okay, so a little bit of a different question. Yeah. Zignib asked, worst and best moments for you with spiders? Worst and best moments. Um, my ooh, best moment, I would say when I first met um, a first web spider um, in real life. So uh -huh. that's the other article that I have up on the wall. Um, these are, are the spiders. Ones that, like shoot themselves forward. Is that everything you have different? No, no. Purse web spiders are really, um, they're like strange little spiders that they they make like a silk like sock almost. Mm -hmm. That's like at the base of a tree and it looks like a tree root. And you would have no idea that a spider lives there unless you knew that a spider lives there. And I got to meet one of the, maybe the only person who studies uh, this really, really rare purse web spider called um, um, Atipus. Snetsingeri, it is the Pennsylvania purse web. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Um, it is only found in West Philadelphia. Huh. Full stop. It is West Philadelphia, born and raised. I got to meet the spider. I got to meet the scientist. We went, we found one. And actually, I have one um, as an outreach spider in my collection. Cool. Um, so that, like, was a really magical moment because I had no idea, like, I knew we were out well, like we went, when I went out with him the first time uh, to like do the field reporting. I had I was like I know we're gonna look for a rare spider, but like I don't know what it's gonna look like. And he's like, oh yeah, it's that that he like points at it, and there's just a bunch of roots on the tree. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And yeah. Then yeah, there's this, there's an amazing little spider in there, and they look they are in the mygalomorph type of spiders. So they look like tiny mini tarantulas, except they're shiny and like they're not very fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're so cool. Neat. Um, yeah. Okay. Worst. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Coming out, uh, worst moment with a spider. Uh, even if you are a spider scientist, I still get startled by them every now and then. So there have been a few times where I'm like out and like something uh, like a, a fishing spider or something. Oh no no, it was when I was looking for jumping spiders um, in Texas, and so I'm looking down on the ground and then I just like walking into like a, a big web in my face uh -huh. like. Startling and scary, but I can't say I've had any like bad moments with spiders. They've been like this really source of joy in my life. Okay, good. Um, so another question that came here is, guy asked, "What's the highest jumping spiders can jump?" Mm. Great question. Uh, jumping spiders cannot jump very high; they can jump very forward. <laughs> so they um, they jump by they they like plant themselves with their fourth legs. Oh, no, sorry, with their third legs. They plant those in the ground, uh -huh. and they use them as a lever. And then they they kick off with the fourth leg pair. Mm -hmm. And the way they kick is they shoot forward. Um, and they can jump forward. The record is about 40 times the length of their own body. Oh so God. if you are a, a five-foot-tall human, that is, I think you've met, 200 feet. Oh, um, my forward. God. Uh, not all drumming spiders can do that. You have to be in, like, the right... Like you can't be too big and heavy and you can't be too small that your legs are not small enough to power it. But like somewhere in that nice middle there, they can just go. Yeah. Um, they mostly jump forward though. So, and you can tell where they're going to jump. They will like get into a position, they'll put their arms forward and then they shoot off. So you, like, I've gotten to the point where like, I know when, where one's going to jump and I've like actually caught them. <laughs> like I've had like a vial and then one like jumps really? forward into the vial. Wow. You feel like, oh, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> Um, How Max, they do? Max with five dollars said, "Thank you both so much for bringing attention to invertebrates. They are so important and underappreciated. That's great. Thank you." Um, okay, let's see more questions. Should more we questions. Some spiders. Pardon? Oh, should I should I get out some spiders? Yeah. I know how like we can start doing some of that. So for everyone, I know some people are arachnophobic. It's a thing that happens often. I find that seeing a spider and like see it helps a lot. Um, but I am going to show some live spiders. They're going to be moving around. 
Um, just so everyone knows if that's something that, that is startling for you, I get it, it oh. is a fear. I used to be irrationally afraid of slugs. Uh -huh. Like I couldn't be near them. I get that that's a thing that happens, but I've learned about slugs and I think they're really cool now. Okay. Um, so let's get out. Um, do we have any questions about like a tarantula or something? And I can get one out. We can talk about that, or we could do the trapdoor spider. Let me know what chat. Maybe whatever's chat. whatever's easiest for you. I think they'll be interested in in all of them or in whatever. They're all similar levels. Um, wallflower yeah. tipped a hundred dollars. By the way. Hey, wallflower, thank you. <laughs> um, with the donation, asked what's your favorite spider and why. We asked that earlier. I think there are people it, that are still showing up. You know what? I'm gonna get out one of my favorite individual spiders. Okay. Like this. Spider as a person is really sweet, okay. and uh, we'll get a chance to meet her, and I can tell you a bit about her story. Great, perfect. This case out here. Um, uh, chat. There are so many fantastic questions. There are always so many fantastic questions. I just can't get through them all. Okay, I'm I'm trying. I'm trying to take like questions from each topic, uh, but I'm sorry if I don't ask any yours. Okay, doing my best. So let's get this little lady out here. Okay, sorry for the movement. And are we still? Are we yeah, still good? We're good okay. Now. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry for that. I had to um, get the cage out. So we're gonna meet Isabel. Okay. Isabel is my Chilean rosehair tarantula, mm -hmm. Gramostola uh, porteri, I think is the species name, um, and she is just really sweet and cute. Uh, and she's actually uh, adopted. So there's a family in when I was in Philadelphia that um, they were moving and they couldn't bring their pet spider. And so they reached out on Craigslist and I happened to be seeing it. And I was like, oh, I could take Aww. take care of her. Um, and she's actually uh, been in the Philadelphia Inquirer newsroom because I brought her in for a show and tell there while That's I was working awesome. there. But Should've let's take a five. look. Oh, I look at that. Okay, so we can actually get really nice and close, but you can see She's a full, pretty nice size for it. Let me, let me full screen you. Hold on one second. Yeah. Um, um, and I can, I can hear. I can put the this so we don't do a shaky cam all day. Because I know. Okay. Uh, here we go. Here we go, chat. Oh, there's Izzy. Hi, Izzy. What kind of spider is she again? I, you she is a Chilean rosehair tarantula. Okay. Um, I believe her species is Gramostola porteri, though there's, a, there's like two species that go by that common name. Um, and so we can see a lot of really um, normal tarantula features. She's covered in fuzzy hair. Uh -huh. She has very tiny little eyes with like a hair mohawk. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> so um, she has big fangs. And you can see she's very slow and calm. Uh -huh. So uh, a lot of tarantulas, in particular those from uh, North and South America, and especially the terrestrial ones, are pretty, pretty chill. Um, this species in particular has a reputation for being one of the calmest, so they are really popular as pets, though they take a really long time to grow, so she's she's quite old. Okay. Um, and they can live to, like, pretty, pretty old. What do you uh, feed her? So, uh, the tarantulas and all spiders are carnivores, except for one. There's one jumping spider species that is exclusively, or 80% vegetarian in their diet, um, but... They, she eats um, crickets, and I also feed her nowadays mostly just um, dubia roaches. So it's a species of cockroach that's really easy to, to raise, doesn't smell. Um, we can actually meet some of those to see some differences between spiders and um, insects later. I realize she's out of focus, so let me, let me try to fix that. Yeah, it goes in and out. Yeah, it, I mean, the webcam's trying to find a human, and it's not doing a great job. But you can see how she moves. I mean, yeah. she's just running along you and that's said, pretty normal for her so shiv thank you for all the subs um you said she was uh pretty old what is that what does that mean for a spider how long would a spider so the live? recorded record uh for sorry that i'm moving everything no, okay. everybody this is a Let's see if we can get oh she's okay now now she's here cool. and i no, you can gently, a lot of tarantulas, you can kind of gently poke them. Uh -huh. Oh, so that right there, this is the first time she's ever done that. That is a tarantula saying, hey, please don't bother me. Yeah. Uh, and they're showing you their fangs and saying, I don't want to be bothered. It's probably because I've been jostling her cage a lot. Yeah. Which I almost never do, but she's never really done anything. She, this is the first time she's ever done this. Um, and I've held her a lot before, but she's a pretty calm little lady. Um, mostly pretty shy. 
Um, sorry, can you ask your question again? Um, oh, I asked how long they live. Oh, yeah. So the oldest recorded spider uh, that we know about, it was 44 years old when it passed away. Wow. What? And in general, it really varies between the species. So tarantulas like Isabel, she can probably reach 30 or 40 years as an adult female. The males tend to live not as long. They're mostly about getting really quick to maturity and uh, finding a mate. Um, jumping spiders and most of the, the kind of regular spiders that you see don't live quite as long, you, maybe a year and sometimes up to like four or five years. Uh -huh. um, the thing about tarantulas is that they actually keep molting after they reach adulthood, which other spiders don't do. And so they, that's I th one of the reasons, and they live very slow lives, as you can see. She's, here hear her spinnerets uh -huh. right there that are laying down silk. Um, they live very slow lives, and so they conserve a lot of energy and can live for a very long time. Uh, while you'll find that other spiders are a lot more active day to day. Okay. Oh, I see that um, she's pretty zoomed in. P-Y, I don't know how to say her name, I'm sorry, I tipped $5. First podcast I've seen, hooray, hi, welcome. Um, and Tano tipped another $5, said, how hard are spiders to keep compared to the average pet? I would say compared to your average pet, they are much, much easier. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a sense of, it varies a lot by species, but I'll give you a sense of what her house is like. Okay. So this is her enclosure. You can see my like, laptop stand in the background uh, reflection. She, and this is a pretty nice elaborate one. Yeah. Um, and basically what I do every week is, oh, shaky cam. I'm sorry, chat for shaky cam. Um, Basically, what I do every week is I feed her maybe once a week. So uh -huh. she in particular will go like two or three weeks without accepting food sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then I keep her water dish filled. And that's it. Uh, tarantulas in particular, the terrestrial ones from dry habitat. So she's from a kind of desert, dry area of, of um, Chile. Mm -hmm. They don't need too much, and they make great cuts. Now, that these ones tend to grow a little slower than the ones from, like, um, warmer, moister environments. But, like, I don't. she doesn't need special heating. She doesn't need special lighting. And you get to have a, a cute little spider pet. Um, they are pretty nice, hands-off pets. I will say that the, the downside is you... I mean, she's usually really fine with handling. Um, so I, I use her for a lot of shows because I can get her out, and she'll just sit there. Um, but some of my other spiders do not like being picked up and most in general, they don't get anything out of it. Um, it's, yeah. it's not a pet that you should get if you're looking to like grab it and lift it up all the time. Cause if they fall, they can actually like really easily hurt themselves or die. Um, but as a, as a pet to like watch and enjoy and kind of observe their behavior, they're really yeah, fun. Totally. Shiv, more subs. Thank you so much. Um, Shiv. let's see, Rocky and Bully. Rocky tipped fifty dollars. Said, "How could you compare the strength of a spider web?" How do you compare the strength of a spider web? So the scientists that study this, is, there's there's uh, two ways things can be strong. It can be strong against being pulled apart, like lengthwise, and strong against being like broken longwise. And so basically, you get a piece of silk and you start slowly putting more and more pressure on it or hanging things from it until it breaks. I see. Um, the strongest silk in the world is from the golden silk orb, no, no, Darwin's orb weaver, like just narrowly beats it. Um, and it is a couple times stronger than Kevlar, um, pound for pound. So spider silk, especially the Darwin's? ones that- Darwin's, Darwin's orb? orb weaver, I think. Uh, the second strongest is the golden silk orb weaver, which is, um, I know that that one's there for sure. I think it's Darwin's orb weaver. I'm gonna put her back well, and we can actually get out some other spiders to meet. Okay, sounds good. Um, Danny, I'll read out your question in a second, okay? Um, and she is, Isabella is wait, named after Wait, did you say bulletproof? Her. I missed that completely. Did you say it was are, bulletproof? <laughs> I said it was, uh, as, I mean, so we never built something out of it that is like the size of a thing to test its bulletproofness, but in terms of how strong the material is, it yeah. is stronger than bulletproof vest material. Oh my gosh. What like heck? multiple times stronger than bulletproof vest material. Chat, were you I think kidding? it's harder to work with as a material, but yeah. like, I'm not like, it's good stuff. Spiders, again, spiders uh, evolutionarily have solved a lot of problems that like humans are now like trying to figure out. I mean, like the most basic one is like jumping spider eyes. Um, I mean, I'll, I'm sure a lot of you now have a phone that has two cameras 
and the cameras are each built for a different job. So there's a portrait camera and there's a widescreen camera. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what a jumping spider's eyes are. There's portrait eyes for high resolution, a uh, single target looking color vision. And then there's the widescreen eyes, which have a huge wide field of view on the sides of their head. Uh, and they've been rocking this for hundreds of millions of years. Well, 150, I don't know how many millions of years actually since yeah. the first jumping spider. But definitely over 100 million years, uh, wow. they've actually, yeah, definitely over 100 because. Oh, no, no, my, the fossil I have is 30. Uh, but yeah, for many millions of years before yeah. we figured things out. Uh, and like a lot of things. Um, so, I mean, spiders can walk on walls with their like suction pad feet, especially our boreal parentals are really good at that. Um, I have, okay, I'm going to try to move us to the arboreal tarantula because she's very beautiful. Okay. Um, because if I move her here, she's going to hide. Okay. And then we won't be able to see her. Um, so we're going to get to look at Grover, who is really pretty. Let's see if we can take our right, chat. Let's hang out. And feel free to just ask me questions while we're doing this. Okay, yeah. So Thanks. Danny Danny tipped a question. He tipped with $15. Thanks, Danny. And asked, Thanks, Danny. can spiders be an environmental indicator? Yes. Oh yeah, that's a real, okay, so let's see if we can get more light on her here so you can really see her coloration. Um, so the spiders are a great way of monitoring the health of an environment because they are predators and prey sources for many different animals. So you can see her here yeah. in the background there. It's one of my, my favorite tarantulas because of how beautiful she is. But um, spiders need a healthy invertebrate population to have uh, a good diversity of them because they need food. And then they are also food for other spiders, for small mammals, and for birds. Mm -hmm. And so if you check out the number and the diversity of spider species that you have, I can tell you a lot about what other animals are able to survive in that environment. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, um, I believe there are researchers using them to monitor populations of different animals. Nice. We Good can question. even, yeah, thank you. Uh, we could even try, uh, depending on how chat feels, because I know we could try feeding Grover. Yeah. So the reason she's named Grover is because she was bright blue as a baby uh -huh. and fuzzy. And now she's kind of grown out of that name a little bit. But uh, she's still very beautiful. Yeah, so this is a Parabena versicolor. They're another popular pet tarantula. Mm -hmm. um, they're from the island of Martinique, I believe. And yeah, just really wonderful. I will say um, the nice thing about tarantulas as pets is that you can, there's a really good community of breeders. So you can get all of these animals without an impacting wild populations. Mm -hmm. And they make better pets because they don't have to deal, they don't come with like the parasites and other issues that wild animals might have. And you're not impacting taking an animal out that might take 20 or 30 years to grow up to get a, a sizable tarantula for the pet trade. So if anyone here is interested in tarantulas as pets, uh, I would strongly recommend uh, looking for a breeder. You will get a tarantula that is not only a better pet for you in that it'll grow better, it'll be healthier, and often it'll be a lot calmer and is more used to you because it's grown up with people and like in captivity. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that that is, um, a responsible way to keep them. Okay, so we're gonna see if we can get her to eat. And you can see, you'll see why, uh, one of the main amazing things about spiders is how quickly they can move when they have to, uh -huh. um, if she's hungry, which I think she is because she's down here hanging out with us. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> <Dang it. laughs> well, you saw her move. Yeah. So that's I why I did it. Yeah, so, if you're ever like, oh no, a tarantula is gonna come and try to hurt me, this is what my tarantulas do when I like slightly jostle their cage. Yeah, uh, they are just like other spiders, quite uh, quite shy animals. Uh, yeah. We can still try to feed her and put in a little cricket or a, a roach at the entrance to her house and see if she'll want to come down and get it. Uh, but I imagine after that. Yeah, she's not coming down. She's yeah, got too okay. Um, So that is, uh, that was Grover. Um, I can do another question. Okay. As we um, go through the spider friends. Let me look. Hold on. Oh, dang it. I was, I knew that was going to happen. Okay. Um, 
Oh, I can see a few other ones that are out right now. Viz asked, do all spiders spin webs? Ooh, that's a great question. Thank you for that question, Viz. Uh, so all spiders have the ability to make silk, but not all spiders use it to make webs like you uh, think of when you think of a traditional spider uh, orb web. Orb web, excuse me. Um, that's why the cool thing about spiders is this diversity. So tarantulas, for example, use their silk to like, they, they make webs to sleep in often to make nests. And they sometimes put it, just like lay it down kind of on the ground mm -hmm. as like, uh, and that those webs will transfer vibrations to them so they can hear prey through the ground. There are some spiders like jumping spiders that only use their silk either to make a sleeping bag to sleep in or um, uh, to swing. So they, they drop like an anchor line whenever they jump so that they don't actually fall all the way down. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are spiders like wolf spiders that like they, they only use it for making nests, uh, wrapping up their eggs, and then all their hunting is through just running around on their feet. Got it. Cool. Um, and I'm sorry, yeah. I should have asked this one first. Uh, Waffle tip five dollars and said, has he ever owned an OBT? Oh uh, yeah. So th that's the other thing I should mention. Almost all my tarantulas here are what are called New World tarantulas, so tarantulas from North, South, and Central America. They tend to be, though not are, are always calmer. Um, they have adaptations that help them feel more comfortable and like less aggressive. There are uh, a bunch of tarantulas. That's why I said this. Depending on where you are in the world, it changes your local spiders. Tarantulas from Africa and Asia, uh, their main way of defending themselves is threatening to bite anything that's near them. Mm -hmm. Now, often that venom may not be deadly for a human, but it is far more painful than the venom from my tarantulas. Okay. Um, cow, you're set up. I didn't, I didn't see all of Oh, yeah, okay. Before. Here's the spider shell. Oh, my gosh. The spider shell. Wait, let me show... And then I have molts up here. So those are they shed their skin, so they make a little scrapbook for you as they grow up. Wow. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. So yeah, there are some tarantulas. If you're looking for a pet tarantula, I would recommend starting with a New World tarantula. Um, curly hairs in particular are really wonderful starter tarantulas. Both of mine are like burrowed and they don't want to come out. So I normally get them out for shows because they're like these fuzz, like they literally like look like fuzz balls. Mm -hmm. um, but Spiders sleeping in a hole in the ground. Yeah. Don't bother it. Um, but yeah, there are so the OBT, which is a, a it's a shorthand for orange bitey thing because it's a bright orange tarantula, quite beautiful. Um, but they are a little more aggressive, and I don't personally keep any though. There are hundreds, if not uh, definitely thousands, of people around the world that do and have no issue. Uh -huh. um, I mean, these spiders can bite too. I just don't bother them. Like any ant, like a dog will bite you more often than a spider will if you don't stick your hand in the spider and try to mess with it. Right. Just okay. respect it like you would any other animal. Yeah. Um, though I would recommend starting with a calmer tarantula because um, they can still be very startling. Um, ooh, we can try to meet a jumping spider. This will be fun. Yeah. So I'll, I'll meet our one jumping spider because I can't do a jumping spider theme thing without meeting one and we'll try to do something fun with the video um i have a macro lens that we're gonna put on my webcam and then that should let us actually you you guys can be able to see the animal like really up close fancy okay so it is not uh, i will say you don't have to be fancy to do this um so the the, the one that i'm using is just from easy macro Mm -hmm. This is like, I don't know, like five, ten bucks. Oh. Uh, my partner got it for me for like a birthday like many years ago. And if you want to have fun with this, with spiders in your life, um, you go on like Amazon or whatever shopping service you prefer using, and you get a little clip-on lens, and you just slap that onto your smartphone, and mm -hmm. you can take really nice photos and videos of uh, spiders or any small animal or like flowers and stuff. Yeah. I would say this is my recommend. If there, if we do recommendations on the show, this is my recommendation. Sure. Yeah. Do some vials with you and a macro lens and just put that in your bag whenever you're going out and just like take a look at stuff because it's great. Yeah, cool. Uh, okay, let's try meeting a jumping spider. Okay. And we can do more questions as I set up. This is, sorry, there may be like a snap uh, as I put this band on here. There is, I'm sorry, chat. <laughs> it's okay, they'll live. So now I'm super blurry, but 
we are focused on very tiny things up close. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Now you now you see where I'm going with this. Okay. Yes. Um, let me just guess. So this is going to be a jumping spider of uh, Platycryptus undatus. It's a pretty common spider in houses and human affected environments. Um, they are the gray wall jumping spider. I think is their common name. Okay. They're very flat and they like to live. Um, they like to live on like crevices and crevices. Ooh, okay, okay. Come on, little guy. So he's very fast. Oh my this is gosh. an adult male. So cool. <laughs> He's so little. Yeah, so this is an adult male. Ooh, and there he goes. So this is gonna there's gonna be a bit of me repositioning him if we're gonna freehand yeah, it. Oh, he's quick, huh? Because uh, he can move pretty fast. There you go. But yeah. you can see he's got this really beautiful orange mustache. <laughs> oh my gosh. And he just heard me talking, by the way. So the jumping spiders can hear vibrations in the air. Did you just look at you? Yes. So the cool thing about jumping spiders, I think one of the reasons that people um, get, uh, they're, they're easy for people to kind of uh, understand is because they will look at you yeah. just like any other animal will look at you. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm searching. I'm searching for an image here. There you go. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Wow. So now you can actually see those eyes on the side of his head. Yeah. In the light. This will do this. There we go. Oh, hi. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So cute. That's so cool. Yeah. How do you know how old this spider is? Uh, this individual, that, so he won't be more than um, like a year. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. I think I, I think I figured out like the perfect. Yeah. I... He's out of fun. Ooh, I don't oh. know that. <laughs> if I do this just right, is he? In or out of focus? I don't want to like poke him because I'm like, he'll jump. He's in frame. He's a little out of focus. He's a little out of focus. Yeah. So um, it's easier when you're not on the webcam, but yeah, there you go. Oh, there we go. Okay, nice. Here we go. That's beautiful. So he be about a year old. Okay. Um, Platypus and Donna take about I don't know six months or so. Six months in eight, eight from baby to maturity, but it really depends on you know how you keep them and how much they eat. Um, this individual is probably a little older because he's been a mature male for a while now. Yeah. I would imagine he'd live, uh, at the most another year in captivity. Like, like I said, that, so yeah, he's going to try to climb the camera. There you go. <laughs> oh, there he goes. There you go. Uh, Gim, thank you for the $20. Oh, little guy. Let's get you back in frame. Oh, <laughs> you haven't done an outreach show in a long time. Ch and you can I, see I they are. This, that this is live, this lens, this little lens thing you got going on. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah, no, these macro lenses are absolutely wonderful. Um, they are like one of my favorite tools to talk about because you can really start noticing the diversity of invertebrates in your life. Mm -hmm. uh, animals that just kind of look like a little dot to you, you get up close and you're like, oh, wow, this is something new. Like, yeah. Even in your backyard, I felt he, he just felt my air movement when I moved my hand or saw me move. Um, there's a lot to be said about being very calm in the back of the air. Um, so I guess, ooh, okay, we should probably get a good angle here. Come on, little guy. There we go. Don't jump on him. Nice, yeah. Don't jump on that guy. There he is. See the hairs all over his body. So those are, um, scales that jumping spiders have. And tarantulas have, they look scales on the exoskeleton. And they refresh those every time they molt. So they, change, they can change colors as they grow. We've been talking about with my tarantula rover, um, they change colors as they they mature into their adult coloration. It's crazy, uh, like the. It's probably not the right word, but like the flexibility. Like I'm just surprised at how yeah. complex his movements are. Yes, they are very, um, especially jumping spiders, since they are so athletic and acrobatic in just how they live their life. Um, but these animals, I mean, they've got eight legs, and those. Each legs have more joints than ours, so they can really oh. move around. Oh, and oh. he just jumped into the camera. Oh, oh no. Uh, it's okay. It's all right. We will gently nudge him. Another useful tool with working with spiders, a paintbrush. It lets you gently nudge your spider back into frame uh -huh. uh, without hurting them. And with tarantulas, it's uh, a nice way 
there's some ideas that it just kind of feels like they're um, fur brushing up against them, so they get. Oh, mm. oh. <laughs> okay, let me here. I'll give him a little bit of terrain, and then okay. that might may or may not help him uh, to calm down. And then we can we can kind of find that. Um, and I'm happy to do more questions because I know you. I'm, I've heard. Uh, you're, oh, well, he's about to hunt. Okay, well, let's get that in train. Yeah, chat, because yeah. uh, cause I have him full screen here and I got two monitors. Do you want to just put questions in chat and I'll maybe see them and, and read them out while we're doing this? If you had a question that I haven't answered, you want to ask it again? So right now he's, oh, he oh. just lunged at um a baby roach that I had in his enclosure as food. Oh. And he just saw it. And so we got a little bit of hunting action. Um, I wish I had like baby crickets because those will really you know, go after them a lot better. Um, Leonard this is a asked beautiful if they pattern. ever. Yeah, that's really cool. Leonard asked if they ever get away from you in your house. Uh, my pet spiders don't. So I, if I find a spider living in my house, I just kind of let it be. Okay. Um, this is a friend. That was another question that was asked: is what should you do if you find a spider in your house? Uh, there's two options. I depending on how comfortable you are with spiders. You can just let it live in your house and have a friend that's eating all the mosquitoes and flies. Mm -hmm. Or if you want, you can just use a little cup and a piece of paper. So you put the cup over the spider, you slide the paper on underneath, and then you can move your spider outside and um, let it go on with its life. I, I keep my spiders around if I find them in the house, just let them kind of do their thing. Mm -hmm. um, or if it's a species that I'm like, oh, this probably should be outside. It wandered in. I put it back out. But yeah. Um, Bean asked, any tips for getting over fear of spiders? Yes. Yeah, that's a question I get a lot. Um, I, it kind of follows general idea of overcoming a phobia mm -hmm. um, and knowledge and exposure. So learning about the animal like even fact about it or finding a, a, a spider that you think is pretty, that would, I know for some people even just looking at them can be startling. Mm -hmm. So you slowly work your way in, up to that. So first, you know, just think about a spider and see, okay, all right, I'm thinking about a spider, nothing bad has happened. Then you can look at pictures of, of spiders and there are some really beautiful ones that I would recommend. Um, I'm going to have to type it in chat, but Typoplana somladonia is a, uh, tar a tarantula that builds a trapdoor, the jeweled trapdoor tarantula. It is ethereally beautiful. Um, and some of those spiders that kind of. Um, Lock them if you want to put that on my screen, you're welcome to, but I can also look it up later. Yeah. So they, um, so starting with a picture or with a toy and getting comfortable being around that. And then uh, getting comfortable being around a spider, a small spider that you, um, uh, in, in your life, like go out and just look at one mm -hmm. and do it on your own terms. Sorry, that's how I should mention. I think a lot of, for a lot of people, they've had stressful interactions with spiders where they were startled by the animal, like, you know, it's night and you see a wolf spider run around and you get spooked and like, I mean, I get spooked by spiders too. Mm -hmm. um, that happens when you're surprised. It's a normal thing. But if those are the only types of interactions that you have with an animal, it's really easy to um, so you, you get him. This is where he sleeps, by the way. This is his little sleeping, silk sleeping bag. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even see that he was in there. Yeah, he's in there. Um, so doing things on your own terms and building positive experiences with spiders. So I know many of the most skilled photographers of spiders started as arachnophobes mm -hmm. and then they started photographing these animals. I'm sorry, ooh, I'm jostling this real bad. I'm sorry, Chip. Uh, let's see if you can get it off of this. I'm not going to stay there. Yeah, so start taking, if you start taking pictures of them, one, you'll get to recognize that they are not like out to get you. Mm -hmm. um, but to your building experiences where you're getting something fun out of interacting with the spider. Okay. He's gonna jump. And this is the jumping posture right here. Arms out, arms forward, legs locked, and there he goes. Someone uh, asked, I think you've said it before, someone asked how long do they live for this, this jump, like the jumping spider? 
Yeah, so jumping spiders will live um, often between one to two years at the most, I'd say in captivity. Um, and then in the wild, probably a little less just because of predators and things like that. Okay, that's uh, fine. Sorry, I, I forgot about that. I'm on my... Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, so people do keep jumping spiders as pets as well, and they can be fun to interact with because uh -huh. you can tell when they're looking at you. I'm waiting. Let's see if I can turn around by waving. He's not paying attention. Um, they interact with you and they're fun to watch, like explore stuff, but they also don't live super long. Yeah. Um, just something to know. It's not a reason not to get a pet. I mean, I've had uh, pet rats before and they are like tiny dogs in how much of a personality they have, um, but they also don't live super long. Megasphere tipped $5, asked, are crabs and scorpions related to spiders? Oh my God, thank you for bringing this up. All right, I'm gonna, I'll take the cam back just because just I love talking about this. Okay. This is one of my favorite uh, things to talk about ever is the relationships between spiders and insects. Um, so a spider, um, or let me put it this way, you, a human, are more closely related to sharks than any spider is to any insect or a crab, because crustaceans are also more closely related to other insects than they are to some other crustaceans. Okay. So spiders, uh, insects and crustaceans are evolutionarily in how their body works and how they've evolved actually within the same group of things. And then spiders, so crustaceans over here, and then spiders and insects, their last common ancestor they had was over 500 million years ago. They are radically different from an insect. They That's... share the fact that they are small and that they have an exoskeleton and almost everything else about them, how their lungs work, how their brain works, how their eyes work, how their bodies are built is different. Um, and it's a really fun way to blow your mind. You yeah. are, you call a spider a bug or an insect, then I get to call you a shark or a bird. <laughs> Okay, that's fair. Evolutionarily, those are the same type of grouping. Like wow. they are so, so different from each other um, that it, it's hard to believe. But once you get to meet spiders up close, um, you'll see that they are really different. Even just like basics on like how their body is built. Can you hold uh, up that so we can see just like how small that spider is? That okay, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, so here he's. Uh, he's oh there. My God. Oh my gosh, he's tiny. Yeah, they're tiny, so they're teeny little spiders. Um, and yet, they have some of the best vision of any animal without a backbone. They actually have the best, like, highest resolution vision of any animal without a backbone on land. Unfortunately, squids, which get really big, have really good vision, mm -hmm. uh, but they're in the water. So, they don't have um, uh, a jumping spider, um, so the species, the, the group that I study, Habernatus, their, the resolution of their eyes, so how sharp that image is, um, is better, as good or better than your pet cat, which is full size of the animal this big, mm -hmm. and the eyeball of the animal is that big, and wow. the jumping spider is that big, full body size, and its eye is, I can't physically hold my fingers small enough together. Yeah. They have amazing vision. Actually, there, there's a really fun uh, figure that I saw in a paper. It basically is which animals are legally blind by human standards. Mm -hmm. Like, if you gave them a vision test, could they physiologically pass it? Yeah. Um, and things like songbirds that we, you know, birds, we think a lot, most birds have good vision. Some have really good ones, but like songbirds, cats, um, a lot of like large mammals. Blind. actually are legally blind and then uh, there's a couple there's quite a few jumping spiders that are just not like their vision is so good that they are not legally blind wow. um human vision is just so absurdly above most other animals in terms of resolution we have horrible color vision uh, well, not horrible but it's not great um that we we like you know there's a big gap but jumping spiders has like, their vision is outstanding yeah. it's really really amazing that's cool okay you guys asked so many good questions. Thank you for showing us those spiders. That was of so course. cool. Um, Do we have time to meet one more? Please, yeah. Okay, uh, and ask me questions while I go grab it. We're gonna okay. try to meet the trapdoor spiders. I promise the trapdoor spider, and I wanna keep my promise to y'all. because Okay, so okay. 
Um, chat, let me look at questions. Actually, somebody asked one in chat. Um, somebody asked, how do you measure a spider's vision? I was thinking the same thing. Um, uh, you... That's a great question. There's two ways to measure the resolution of an okay. uh, animal's eye. You can uh, take the physical eye and like do measurements of the lens um, and how many, like you can take a picture of how many cells it has in the retina and count the density. And you can use mathematics to calculate Okay, and a lens this size will, fo and you actually can shine a light through the lens and see where it focuses and how much it gets disrupted mm -hmm. and calculate, okay, how well, um, how well will this animal be able to see mathematically? That's mm -hmm. one way of doing it. The other is a behavioral test. So you can basically test animals. The, the test is basically when things that are black and white blur into gray. Um, so you can show an animal like, um, alternating black and white lines in a test where they either have to tell it apart or often you use a um, use an instinctive response. So you basically, you can move something mm -hmm. that is a thin black and white lines and you make those, those lines smaller and smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. And when you move it, the animal will sense motion and like a jumping spider will like respond, right? Yeah. Uh, if once there's a point where those lines become so small that they don't longer look like black and white lines, they look like a gray thing that isn't moving. Mm -hmm. And then you have a behavioral test of what is the smallest possible difference? What is the like effective pixel size uh -huh. of an eye? Got it. Go. Cool. Good question. And you, can do both, you can do both of those things. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, thank you for asking it. Yeah. Of, uh, so you're showing us your, your trap we're doors try to, Yeah, we're going to try. I'm going to okay. try. Well, so the trick is getting the all right, we're gonna do some. We're gonna do some quick build of a stage for um, the webcam. Okay. And then we are going to. Oops, I'm sorry, shaky cam again. Yeah, um, don't worry about it. But, all right. So those are weights. Those are not a spider. That is also not a spider. It's just this one isn't built to go down that. Way. Okay. Um, I want to tilt that up slightly. Uh, we can go up another one, maybe. Uh, mm, webcam. All right. Well, how can we tilt this slightly up? Okay. Turn off this keyboard. This is this is what science is. It is building elaborate contraptions that let you try to, to <laughs> see works. something. Whatever works. Um, and then that's still not. What's it? Man, this is this is more of a challenge than I expected. Don't worry. They get they get scuffed scuffed production from me daily. So. They're we, not, we're gonna get they're used to it, trust me. Okay. So do y'all see well, um, let me get a uh, tweezers because I'm gonna have to lift that lid. Uh, but do y'all see this one's easy because there's only just the trapdoor spider in the enclosure. But do y'all see these lines here? This is a silk line. Mm -hmm. Um and they are radiating out from the trapdoor, which is there. Oh, okay. And hopefully the webcam stays in focus and we're gonna lift it. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And of course yeah, the lighting, I didn't think about, hold on, I, I can get um, a light because I forgot that dark inside if you're backlit. Okay. okay. Latex, thank you for the $3. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Look at that. Can you see? Yeah. Like, are, we, are we seeing this? Because... I really wish, um, let me see if I can get a phone light and we can, I'll try it again and we won't see if we can spook, uh, don't spook them. Uh, all right, try number three on oh, Lefistia. Yeah. Trapdoor spy, oh. So they make that, the whole thing themselves. They make this whole thing. They build, build a tunnel on the ground and it's all web and they attach, they will actually go out on the top and attach stuff to camouflage it. So they will like add like little bits of silk and stuff and um, use it to tie down like moss and like little bits of rock and whatever. And then when something lands on those traps, uh, those trigger lines, they will leap out and grab it and then leap back inside. Now this one. Oh, that's why they little, do that. Yeah. So that's this one's still terrifying. pretty small. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. impressive. I'm gonna try to get out the the uh, the one that's in a nicer house, and you'll actually get to see a little bit of what this looks like in the wild. Okay. Um, 
So I've been meaning to rehouse the other one into a bigger enclosure, but this one already has been. So they live, this species I believe is from, uh, there's a couple of species in the, in the genus Lephistius. Um, this one is from uh, Southeast Asia. Uh -huh. And this is what they look like. So they live on these like, like basically hills, like little um, road cuts and like slanted um, uh, kind of little slopes. And they will dig into that and then build their trapdoor facing down. And we can actually, we'll try to, we'll try to feed this one. Um, and again, feel free to stop me and ask questions. I'm just no, I'm you're so fine. We're we're having a great time. Um, Uncle did ask a question. I was gonna ask. Um, I oh shoot, I forgot how he phrased it. Are I was are some spiders smarter than others? Um, I think all spiders are pretty smart, but they are smart at different things. So spiders are really really good at. Uh, tasks that we don't normally think of as like, I mean, that we just don't consider very often. Mm -hmm. So like a spider can, when something lands in their web, they can calculate the position of it and leap and grab it. They can build webs, right? Like that's not um, easy to build this thing in 3D space where you can't even, they can't even see, right? They're, most of web building spiders have horrible vision. They can't even see like the tree branches and get a sense of where they're going to build stuff. Mm -hmm. um, imagine building something when you like, uh, when you're legally blind and you're building a structure that's like the size of a house that has to hang in the air. That's really hard. Yeah. Um, but in terms of intelligence that uh, is similar to our own, I would say jumping spiders are some of the best. Okay. Because they not only can, we know that they not only can, um, let's put some, oh, I'll finish my thought because we're going to get distracted. Okay. Um, they not only can, they hunt kind of like humans do. So like, you know, they, they're watching a prey in the distance. They sneak up on it, they pounce, mm -hmm. but they can actually make, and they can like solve mazes and make these kind of complicated decisions. Yeah. They can even, um, we have evidence that they can basically have like an abstract map in their head. So there's some jumping, some jumping spiders that specialize on eating other spiders. Uh -huh. um, and these ones, they will like, they will spot a orb way, uh, a web building spider off in the distance. Mm -hmm. And they'll say like, okay, that's over there. And then they'll just go in the like opposite direction, go all the way up around and actually like drop down on a piece of silk, like burglar style. Yeah. Burglar style and like drop literally on top of the spider. And they haven't even like, it hasn't been visible to them for like minutes. That's so They cool. can make this mental 3D representation of the world, conceive of a plan and then execute it. Wow. Which is really cool. Um, yeah, so I would say, like, in terms of that kind of stuff, jumping spiders are up there. Um, awesome. Feel free to ask another question. I'm going to try to feed uh, our Lephysius. All right, so there's going to be... Pretty... It's just so symmetrical. Like, the... They're, they're beautiful. Um, oh, oh, did we see that? So he missed because the, the <laughs> rolled down, down. But we're going to try again. Come on. Ooh, oh, 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 we're going to... He's so fast. <laughs> Yeah, they are they are absolute fast lads. They they just dart in and out. And this is like the only time I really get to see them is when I feed them. Yeah. Um, but feeding time is, with them is one of my favorites. Oh, for sure. There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and That's that amazing. my favorite spider. I love these guys so much. Oh, they're so much fun. <laughs> um, so quick. Yeah. Oh, wow. sorry for Let's see. He's probably back down the bottom of the tunnel. Maybe we can get a glimpse. Yeah, he oh went. You can see how big amazing. that is in there. It's a whole burrow. Yeah. Um, but he wow. started back in with the food. I say he. I don't actually know that the sex of this individual. Um, I hope it's the female because then it will live a lot longer usually. But they're growing up uh, quite well. I got them when they were like that big like teeny teeny weeny like little dots basically yeah. and they've grown up so well in the last year That's all right awesome. that was my trapper spider i'm happy to do more questions i don't know if how much time we have left yeah but i I've, I've got plenty of time so if you want to talk spiders like i'm here chat would you should i keep going should i keep asking some questions because i i mean i know there have been a ton and i have not gotten to them all um yep yeah, okay sure all right let's go through let's do a couple do more here then um Okay, this is a little bit different, but I think that it is... I already lost the question. Um, da, 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 da. 
Can I do this? Oh, I can. Oh. Wow. Um, it's a little bit different, but I think it's relevant to a lot of the people uh, that are that are viewing because we're yeah. on the younger side here. Um, so, they ask, can you can you describe the PhD defense process? That's a great question. Um, honestly, I wish I had known about this because so, I I'm the first person in my family to go to like a PhD program. I had no idea what it was like. You don't know, you know, you unless you've been in it, it's really hard to know. You know, someone who has the PhD defense itself. Um, you first have to it varies a little bit by school, but generally you have to write your dissertation. And this is an entire document that is basically all the scientific discoveries and contributions that you've made um, that fit into like the you know a kind of package that is basically proof that I have contributed enough to science to be awarded a doctorate mm -hmm. to be a doctor. Um, so you write your dissertation, and that's something that you've been working on throughout the years of your PhD. Uh, you put that together, and so it's basically a series of academic papers talking about your research. Mm -hmm. you, you compile that into different, ch those are the chapters of your PhD. Um, and then you hand that into your advisors, your committee. Um, for me, it was two weeks ahead of time. Sometimes it's you know a month or so. They read it. And then in the meantime, while they're reading it, you are writing a talk, the public defense, which is what I did yesterday. Um, this is a talk that you summarize all of your research uh, explain why it's important, what your the, like big you know questions are, how you tackled them, what you contributed, um, basically sharing your science with. It's a public event, so with other people, which is why I got to invite a lot of friends and family. Um, and then after that ends, you go uh, to the private defense, where you it's just you and your committee, um, and they ask you questions about your research and they are deciding whether or not you know if they have questions about your dissertation like why did you do this why did you do that what would you do here they kind of grill you and then they decide they've usually decided ahead of time so by the time that you're getting to your defense your committee's probably already has an idea of like right we're probably going to pass you um it, it's often like if they let you defend you're you're um usually pretty safe but um then they they decide they tell you and then you're a doctor and then like you have to do all the paperwork oh for me for example often you have to like do edits to your dissertation based on what the, the feedback that they gave so mm -hmm. they say maybe expand on this section or like i you don't think that this is accurate please revise it or you didn't you forgot to talk about this thing uh, but you revise your dissertation you submit that to your school and then that's when you officially graduate but your committee saying yes or no you are ready to be a doctor is the like now it can be Sebastian Echeverry PhD, which is yeah. what happened yesterday. So cool. Um, Helga yeah. tip ten dollars. Hipster with ten dollars. Uh, Cuban with fifty. Botox. I think I already said for the fifty. Uh, we surpassed and Cine with the two dollars. So we we surpassed our one k goal. So we're at a thousand dollars and oh! thousand and fifty six dollars. Um, That's amazing. So That's so cool. good. Thank, Thank you. you all. Um, okay, I have a good. Maybe like a fun question for you. Yeah, let's do it. Um, Riz asked if you could combine two traits from two different spiders into one spider, what would they be? That's oh a my God. hard question. Okay. Oh, this is an amazing question. Um, I Okay, this is a little selfish, but okay. I would take a jumping spider and make it tarantula sized. Okay, I love that. Actually, that's great. So, like a jumping spider that I could like have on my shoulder. Yeah. But it's not as a jumping spider. I can train it. You know what I mean? Like you, because you can train yes. jumping. Spiders. Would be like the coolest thing. Like a um, jumping spider with a brain that big. Like, can you imagine how smart it could be? That would be. And it'd be so, so cute. Cool. Yes, it'd be big and to fuzzy and colorful. It, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that. That's a simple one. Uh, but I think, I think jumping spiders have a lot of my fun. They've got the climbing, the jumping, yeah. the vision. And yeah, just size of the tarantula. That's all I want. <laughs> yes, thank you for the $5. You said you can train them. What, yeah. what can you train them to do? Uh, so most of it's been done in the context of science to figure out what they can learn and what, how, like their mental abilities. Uh -huh. But I mean, you can train them to like, um, like associate colors with certain things. So like, okay, this color type of colorful food is safe. This one's dangerous. You can train them to do like mazes and puzzles. Mm -hmm. 
you can train them to like respond. Like, I don't think anyone's trained them to do like tricks, but I think it's because people just haven't tried. Um, certainly people who have pet jumping spiders um, can attest to like, they get, they, they get used to you and they know that you are the thing that brings them food and they will get excited when you come in because they know food's coming and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I think there's probably a lot more that we could train them to do that we just haven't yet. Uh, there's actually, I think there's a great uh, academic paper called How Not to Train Your Spider. And it's all the um, compilation review of all the scientists' attempts to train spiders, different spiders, um, to do all these bunch of different tasks and how well mm -hmm. we've been able to for different spiders. So that would be an, a fun thing to check out if you're uh, curious about spider learning behavior. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um... Another not as spidery related question, but That's Remy fine. asked, now that he has become a doctor, what are his plans or goals moving forward? That's a great question. Yeah, so I'm just offended. So I'm going to take a break. Good. Because I've spent six years doing this. So I'm going to take like 10 days or so off. Oh, okay. And then, <laughs> a whole 10 days after getting your PhD. Uh, okay, it, it depends on like job stuff. But yeah. basically, I really, I mean, this sort of thing, like, teaching and sharing how yeah. cool animals are and how cool science is with other people is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Okay. So I'm looking for jobs in science communication and science education. Great. Um, I've got a position that I'm waiting to hear back on the final round um, as an outreach educator at my university. Yay. Um, so we'll see if that goes through. Um, but that would be, I would be visiting high schools and like doing science experiments with them. Yeah. So like, that would be so much fun. Right. Outreach um, education but, is my, yeah, my favorite thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, apart from I mean, this, this doing outreach well. education right. right now, like yeah, you're, yeah. you're there. Right. Um, so uh, first of all, I, I didn't get to say that, but the idea that we're doing a science podcast on Twitch Interesting, is like, isn't it? <laughs> it's so cool. And I love it. Like, yeah. before this morning I was like cleaning up and I was watching, I was on Twitch, but I was watching like gameplay footage, right? Oh, I was watching watch Twitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, so I was watching, uh, if anyone knows, Wooly Versus from the Super Best Friends kind of video game people. Chat. I was watching his playthrough of uh, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. And I was oh. like, yeah, I was, like, I was having fun. I was watching that kind of stuff. Uh, but like the that fact that like, oh yeah, in like 15 minutes, I got to switch over to be on Twitch talking about science. Yeah. I love this. This podcast it's, has been great too. I was I was worried that people would be hesitant about watching Spider. We're at like almost 2.5k viewers. Yo. Uh, which is not. So thank you guys for watching. This is awesome. Yeah, seriously. Um, yeah, that's cool. I didn't know you watched Twitch. I did. Yeah, I heard yeah. you reference chat a couple times and I was like, he said that very smooth. Like, <laughs> like he's like heard someone say like, okay, chat. He was like, sorry, chat, like camera shaky. <laughs> I was like, oh, he knows. Yeah, I, I, I watch like Let's Plays and that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, but I'm like, um, what was I going to say? Like the idea that you're like, opening up new places for people to, to engage with science and like yeah. having the on like personal connection mm -hmm. is like, I think I think that's really valuable because like a lot like me growing up the only scientists I knew was like Steve or well, he wasn't even that right. were, like only naturalists I knew were like people on TV yeah and like you get a really limited view of them it's mostly like old white dudes um and you don't get to interact with them you get to ask questions you don't get to see what their personality is like sometimes you do but not always but like something with Twitch, like we're having a conversation and it's it's really fun. It's where people are. I, I love it. I'm like, this is such a cool idea. Yeah, it's it's great because of the demographic too, because they're younger, right? Um Bernie with $34, Troll with $3, Thank you. Oz five, Viewy ten. Um oh, thanks everybody. The donations that came in, there were a couple questions. Uh Troll asked, yeah, I'm cool. currently studying zoology in Germany. Definitely want to work in animal conservation. Any hints on where to begin and future perspective as a zoologist in that field? Uh, so that's a, uh, well, first of all, that's awesome that that's something that you really want to do. If you, I'm going to guess that you are like in college or undergrad. I, I know it has a different name in Europe and I apologize. I have an American perspective on these things, unfortunately. <laughs> um, if you want to go into excuse me, conservation, there's kind of two ways that I've seen people go into it, uh, though it is a little outside of my field, but I've talked to conservation scientists. Um, there's the science, conservation research, which is often you would go to graduate school 
um, do a degree in animal conservation um, or a related field, uh, like sometimes like population biology or like um, are the ones that I see. Um, and then once you get your degree, you can go work it, you apply for jobs. Uh, often those are funded uh, through governments or large institutions, uh, or sometimes you stay as a researcher at a school um, and your research is conservation, is research that informs conservation practice. There are also organizations that do a lot of the actual conservation on the ground work. So um, Xerxes Society, for example, is an example of that, or Audubon here in the United States, I think they're international. Um, they yeah, yeah, so that would be a place where you could get a job as someone who is, Often they look for people with advanced degree, like a, a grad school degree. Um, but there's a place where you get jobs say, okay, here's what the research tells us about this animal. Let's go do a population survey and let's figure out how we can uh, improve, uh, increase the population or what are the problems and stuff like that. Right. So my advice would be to, um, I would say if you're in, in undergrad, reach out like look up animal conservation programs in so you can type in like animal conservation graduate school countries that you're interested in and you can go to different you know international for your stuff too um and try to find a school that has a program if you find any animal conservation people on twitter and there are quite a few um who have like big twitter accounts is that i'm mostly active on social media on twitter you could just tweet at people and be like hey i'm interested mm -hmm. in this. Like, you guys can do command yes for all of the socials. Command org for, for Xerxes. Um, yeah. I get a lot no, of the DMs sorry. that a lot of the DMs that I get are um, or I get a lot of DMs asking about I want to work with animals, I want to do conservation, what what do I do? Yeah. Um, so that's a fantastic answer for, for this this dono that we got. Um, I would if also you're say younger, that. what up? Oh yeah. Apologies. <laughs> My bad, my bad. I, don't want to I was gonna say if you're younger, like if you're high school age or something, and you're trying to get into uh, you're trying to get into conservation or whatever. I always tell people that a great way to start is uh, by volunteering. Yes, um, one good, to figure yeah. out if that's what you want to do, and two, if you're a really good volunteer and you're committed and you start getting to know people in mm -hmm. the field or in conservation or in exotics or whatever you want to do, it's gonna help you a lot. Anonymous tip ninety eight dollars. Yo! Oh, thank you so much. Um, sorry, what were you? What were you gonna say? I was gonna say the volunteering thing. Cool. As, as a good way to get in experience, and then a lot of times, uh, zoos often and museums often have a conservation research department that yeah. is not always like public facing, but they have scientists on staff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the conservation scientists I know is from uh, the Pittsburgh, the National Aviary here in Pittsburgh. They do cool. conservation. Um, and that's how I know some of this stuff. Um, and so you, in your process of volunteering, will get to meet these people and you can ask them directly. I wish I had like more personal experience, but that's that's where I've got to share. Oh, that's great. Um, so Bernie tipped uh, a few minutes ago with his $34 tip asked, have you ever lost a spider? Have I ever lost a spider? So I've had spiders pass away, unfortunately, from old age, usually. I've had, uh, an, um, some jumping spiders, when I was keeping them for research and I had like hundreds, occasionally one would die from like a bad molt. So that's one of the riskier times for a spider where they have to shed literally all of their exterior body and actually some of the like the lining of the their esophagus. Um, they have to shed all of that to grow into their new skin. It's a very dangerous time. If the humidity isn't right, they can get stuck and pass away. Mm. Um, have I lost a spider in terms of like, like, oh, I don't know where a spider is. Yeah. Um, I've definitely had that happen when I'm like out in the field trying to catch a spider <laughs> when like one gets out. Um, we, when I had them in the lab, yeah, when we had a lot of them, um, when you're feeding like hundreds of jumping spiders a day and like putting food in their container and closing it every now and then, uh, you like, I don't recall losing one. I recall walking into the spider room and there's a spider like on the table and I'm like, <laughs> why are we on the table? I see. Okay. okay. What the problem? And then the problem is, okay, they're all individually ID'd because we have to keep track of, you know, who they are and uh -huh. if we use them in an experiment. And I'm like, okay, I don't know who you are. <laughs> so I'm going to put you in a new container saying yeah. found in the room and we can't use you for experiments. Um, so that's happened. But, okay. you know, as a general rule, if you build, if you have the right type of enclosure mm -hmm. um, and you are aware of when you're interacting with the spider, you could they they don't often get out 
unless you've made a mistake. Okay. Um, let's do like, you want to do like three more questions? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Because um, it's a decent segue. Al yeah. asked, how do you, or how does he go about finding his spiders in the wild? Oh, man. Uh, I actually have, well, so I, I, whenever I go out for a walk, I bring a little pack with me. Mm -hmm. uh, now in the days of the pandemic, it has some like disinfectants in there, but uh -huh. it usually also mostly has a bag of vials, um, which I will show you. Which is the vial that I showed you earlier, so like vials like this. Um, and so I always have them ready when I see a spider. Um, a lot of, some of it is experience of just like knowing where they're gonna be. Mm -hmm. uh, jumping spiders tend to be on leaf litter underneath in kind of like tree areas, or that's a species, species that I go for often there. But a lot of the common ones that you'll see are on vertical surfaces of either buildings or fences or trees. Um, and the cool thing about jumping spiders is that they're, I'll, I'll demonstrate the capture technique. Um, there, though there is a far more comprehensive video by literally the world's, I would say best expert on jumping spider um, um, diversity. Okay. Wayne Nathan has a YouTube channel and he just has a video called how to catch jumping spiders. Right. And it is all the equipment and everything, but generally real quick, um, say I have a jumping spider. Well, okay, there's a jumping spider on this book, but imagine it's smaller. Okay. Um, and the spider's here. Let's put it. Uh, okay, we can't quite see the book. If we you can see, okay, we can see here. We can, right? So say the spider is, I'll use the stand in for a Oh, spider. I see. Here, okay. Um, can you guys see me? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, okay. Um, so what I'll do if it, the spider's right there, the trick is you can never outspeed the jumping spider. Okay. Their vision for motion is so good that if you try to do this, yeah, uh, they will just still see it, react immediately, and jump away. Mm -hmm. The trick is to have both these things in each of your hands, and then move one, move the the lid hand, move the the, the cup. You very very slowly get it nearby, and then you move the lid to direct the very slowly. Because if you move slow enough, they won't have that immediate, like, jump out of here response. Mm -hmm. And then you just slowly, only moving one at a time. If you move both, they will tr they will notice it very slowly. And then you tip it in. You, like, here, sometimes you can get outspeed them. But I, I often just kind of, if you bump them in the right, like, sometimes uh, one thing I do is, like, I bump them with this. And then they jump into the lid. And those yeah. ones are feel great. Um, that's how you catch a jumping spider. Yep. slowly patiently uh sometimes they will jump away they never go too far and that you'll you won't see them instead of like trying to dig up where that you think they want give it a second they'll like peek up again mm -hmm. at a certain point just keep an eye out on the ground uh but it's once you get the hang of it you can get pretty good at it um i've had a few catches where like i know exactly where it's going to jump and i just bump it and like catch it in the air like this that those ones <laughs> Um, but it, it takes experience, um, I will say, but it's really not that hard. Just need to get, you can also like, uh, like old medicine bottles, pill bottles, anything with the same kind of size structure of these sort of things. So you can buy these, you don't have to, um, works. And then just go out and look for them. Once you start looking for them, you'll, uh, you'll realize they're actually a lot more common than you think. Yeah. Um, none just hit $25 said, I love this podcast so much. I I have a newfound appreciation for spiders. Thanks, Spider Man. Thank you. Thank <laughs> That's you. so nice. Both for calling me Spider Man, though that is Doctor <laughs> Spider Man. Um, but also for lo like learning to like spiders more. That's all I ever want. For sure, we're at uh, one thousand two hundred and forty-three dollars. Okay, let's do two no. more questions here. Um, okay. okay. Good question, just in case people are new here, because we talked about myths earlier. This question is: Are mm -hmm. there any spiders that try to attack attack humans for no reason? Uh, basically none. So there are spiders that you might, there are spiders that will lunge at you, and those are the largest, the large tarantulas from Africa and Southeast Asia. But you'll notice if you watch videos of this, um, uh, basically the spider will rear up mm -hmm. and it'll like bite at the air. And what it's saying is, please don't come near me. I'm very scared. If you come near me and try to bother me, the only thing I can do to defend myself is to bite. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you keep continuing to go near the spider and bother it, 
then it will try to bite you. But there's no spider that's just like running around biting for no reason. They bite either to catch their food or because they think that their life is in danger. Just like any other animal, <laughs> that's the two reasons that the, these things bite. And it, I think it sometimes might be hard if you're not um, fully aware of a spider. You like It might seem like a surprise because you don't really realize that you are scaring it. Mm -hmm. um, like if, if you didn't notice that the spider was there. But the spider noticed you, it felt your vibrations through the ground, and it did its best to try to warn you in some way or get away. Um, and if that, if you didn't notice that, or like you continue to try to bother it, it may try. But like all the spiders that you're going to see in North America, at least, um, are not going to bite you unless you are cornering them, mm -hmm. unless you're deliberately doing it, or like you're like, you know, put your hand on the ground and you don't see what's there. But. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So last question here. Um, Hunt yeah. asked, what's a spider's role in their ecosystem? And I'll add why, why are spiders important? Those are wonderful questions. So I'll start with the, the simple one, which is one of the answers to the second. Spiders are this really important level of, um, I believe they're called mesopredators. So they are predators that are not on the top of the food chain, but they're not on the bottom either. Mm -hmm. So spiders will eat herbivores. So they'll eat, you know, insects that eat plants. Mm -hmm. And in that way, they control uh, the effect of those insects on plant populations. Mm -hmm. So the reason that the world isn't, that, that trees are still on, still have leaves, uh, that insects haven't eaten them all is because there are things out there eating those insects. Right. And one of those is spiders. Uh, they also eat other predators, so they eat ants. Well, a few specialize in ants. They eat other spiders. Um, they eat a bunch of different types of animals and are also eaten by a bunch of different types of animals. So there are many animals that even specialize on eating spiders mm -hmm. or their reproduction requires a spider. So um, there are a lot of wasps, for example, that have evolved to catch spiders, paralyze them, and then use them as like long-term food for their growing um, um, uh, larva. Mm -hmm. So they will seal up the still living paralyzed spider with the larva. And that is food that won't spoil because the spider's not dead yet for the, the larvae to eat as it grows. And that animal needs spiders to live. Things like small birds and small mammals are also huge predators of spiders. Sometimes those could be a really big percentage of what an animal eats depending on its, um, its habitat. So they are both food and predators for a, for a lot of animals that like you like oh like a cute little bird a lot of those rely on there being spiders to eat. Right. Yeah. And so that's one of the reasons they're important is because they are important to other animals. Um they are also important to us in terms of ag like food growing like agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, so spiders, like I said, eat things that eat insects. So there have been studies that show if you are a farmer and you let, it was, I believe, a study in rice farms, if you let, if you do practices that let there be natural populations of spiders, you not only have to spray less insecticide, so you save money, you don't have to deal with the, the side effects of spraying insecticide and like getting it into your water, you actually grow more rice because the spiders are just having a ball. They're eating all of the insects that are coming in to eat the rice um, and the spiders get a home too. So like they are really helpful in that way. We can learn a lot about technology. Like I we mentioned earlier, silk uh, camera design. There are a lot of uh, problems, like physical problems of like how to do X thing that spiders have evolved to do. Yeah. And we can be inspired by them and see improve our own technology. Mm -hmm. um, and they're also just really fun, beautiful animals. Yeah. Like, big to the sense of like, why are they cool? It's because I can go out and I can see 10 different types of wildlife that are all super weird doing something fun. They're just, and they have an entertainment aesthetic value. You know? I always forget uh, to include that reason when people ask me why biodiversity is important or why conserving this animal. I give them all the like, you know, the like textbook answers of. of I mean, like, they're all yeah. It's a uh, those are all part of it, and I think for some people, you really have to give them the dollar. Like that's a thing that I had to learn because I would always just give like. Why I don't would know you what not you're talking want about. To save them. They're so cool. cool. <laughs> like, 
I see one and I become happy. Like, how right. is that not enough? Yeah. But like, you know, not for every, not everyone has that reaction. So mm-hmm. there are, there are other reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that question. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Last question. That's just my question out of curiosity. Yeah. Cause I love having this conversation. Um, okay. You know how, what was, okay. The word that, I don't know if you know Imogene. No, it wasn't Imogene. It was Ellie Armstrong. She talked about okay. charismatic megafauna and conservation, yeah. why people hook on to um, like polar bears and whatever uh, for invertebrate conservation. Cause they like, we know that they don't get um, that much of a voice wallflower. Thank you for the $5. Um, why do you think that people hooked on to bees so strongly like save the bees what is it about bees do you think that they think that they're just cute or is there something more is it the marketing like i think that's a really great question about why people get into different animals um be, so for bees i think there's two reasons um one is because they're domesticated so honeybees the one that is the poster child of like save the bees mm-hmm. um, or that often we talk about you know colony collapse disorder and things like that mm-hmm. Those are domestic animals that provide honey, right? They are the they are the main reason we have them, and that that we are like tuned into them is because we've raised them for many years, imported them to the United States, and um, like we we depend on what they make for things that we like, delicious honey. Yeah, uh, they are also cute, but I mean, if you talk to someone like a lot of the time, there's still a cultural feel of, of bees of like, oh, I don't want to be stung. Um, I think the fuzziness helps. Fuzzy, as we know, is always good. Yeah. Um, but I think the the like we have this really nice positive association with um, um, with honey. There have been a lot of like cartoons and stuff that play off that of like showing bees as a as a like uh, maybe it helps that they're social animals that work together. Mm-hmm. Um, that might be a thing that we can like kind of get in on. Like, oh yeah, we're all part of a team. Um, but I think I think for me, my my guess is the honey is the honey, and like that means that there is a financial team putting money into the marketing. Okay. Because the problem with with the save the bees is like yes, we need to save the bees, but the bees that we need to save are uh, the native bees right. in our that are native to North America, native to their whatever other parts of the world, because mm-hmm. those are the ones that are getting wrecked by us changing the environment pesticide use things like that um that like often save the bees ends at like oh we're gonna make a new you know we're getting a urban honey honey hive which is like that's cool like it's cool that you can have pet bees i'm all for that but like that is not helping and it might even be um hurting if there's competition though usually in urban areas there's native bees that are competing for the same resources so I think that it's really great that we have that. I'm glad there's there's you know groundswell and money behind that, but I, I really hope that it, it can diversify. And that's one of the cool things that Xerxes Society does is that they are going out there to save our native bees, and their 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 money is about like okay, let's find ways for wood boring bees and these like weird non social bees. And in fact, there's a lot of like really cool ones that are like shiny, like metallic green and everything. Yeah, I've seen they're, those. They're bees. But they they live individual solitary lives, and they are like pollinating all these kind of rare plants and stuff that we need. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. I, I always ask people that question because it's it's so interesting from a conservation perspective. Mm-hmm. Like, what got so many people to hook on an an or a, you know something that they normally wouldn't? Um, so, yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a snippy tagline. You know, it's got yeah, bees, and all you the know. like clothes and flowers yeah. and what yeah um what yeah. with the 50 dollars thank you yeah that too Ooh, um, wow nice thank you and wallflower said, please don't ignore my last question wallflower's last question was something along the lines okay. of should i bring a thousand spiders to europe and can i adopt them all out when i get there i think the i don't really know how to answer that question i would probably say don't Wallflower. <laughs> i think that is a question for uh looking up european um um border control laws for the movement of animals, because I don't want you to get into legal trouble. Uh, Importing spiders between countries, I know this just from like the tarantula pet trade, does usually require a permit. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry I ignored your question. I just wasn't sure how to answer. (laughs) Yeah, no, 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 that's a a solid, real question. I know there are people, there are companies and like individual breeders that 
there's a big tarantula pet trade in Europe, and so there's a lot of like importation, but you need a license uh, so that everything can be tracked and we, we can track uh, and pr hopefully prevent illegal capture from, of animals from the wild and illegal uh, trade. So I would check on, on any laws before you move any spiders. I would also just check um, if the spider that you're bringing is native to Europe, because you do not want to introduce a new species to um, a, to a new population where it might take off. If you have a thousand, that can be very easily a founding population, and you do not want to bring that into an environment where it might make a local species extinct. Yeah. Okay. Good. There's there's a there's a good answer to your question. I'm sorry I didn't have one. <laughs> okay. Um. That's all the questions for today. All right. Um. I know we went over. Thank you so much for, for your time happy. and yeah. talking to us. And that was, I mean, that was amazing. I didn't expect to see spiders at all, but that made it so much better. It was so cool. Oh, no, I gotta show off the spiders. Eh? Of course, Back. Dion. Thank you for the five dollars. Um. So we ended today at a thousand three hundred and five dollars for Xerxes. Oh my god. Yeah, which is amazing. Yo, there 1.3k. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank guys you guys for donating. Thank you for <laughs> watching. Also, viewership today was nuts. Cool. Um, and congratulations on yesterday on your PhD. What what an amazing! I hope you have a good ten day break. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited. I have a lot of spiders to build new houses for. I have a lot of video games to play. Great. I have a lot of TV to watch. I'm like okay. So hyped. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm so, we're, we're all so happy for you. Thank you so much for coming on. This was awesome. Thank you, Maya, for not only doing this show in general, but like having me on. This has been so much fun and like exactly what I needed to like get back into the energy because I love talking about these animals. Good. Yeah, I can tell you, you're, you definitely get energy from the communication part. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so best of luck with, with your next Thank steps, you. but I'll be, I'll be in touch. Yeah, and if y'all, uh, if you had a question that you didn't get a chance to answer, like that I didn't get a chance to answer, you're welcome to tweet at me, and I'll try to give you a, a good response on Twitter. That's where I'm most active. Uh, it's probably the best way to reach me, though. I have sp my spider photography is on Instagram, um, and I have a website that is still out of date because it says I'm a grad student. Which is funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can do command guest in chat that'll link you his Twitter, yeah. Instagram, and his website, so you guys can check those out um if you want and all right thank you thank awesome. you thank you thank, thank you, you so much this, this has awesome. been a real joy all right I will and thanks to again you. to everyone who donated this is the coolest thing that we can actually <laughs> contribute money to xerxes Good. this is amazing yeah. guys great job okay and latex with a dollar and a cent so now we have one thousand you made it six dollars one cent <laughs> uh and i'll just say go out if, I, if there's one thing i can ask everyone to do go out find a spider and just like watch it, take a photo of it, check it out, post it on iNaturalist, just like have a fun interaction with a spider and like tell someone, hey, I had a cool time, I saw a spider. Cool. That's, that's my only other request of everyone. I love that. Okay. Yeah. All right, I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. All right, take care, Maya. All right, bye. Bye, right, chat. <laughs> that was... One of the best podcasts I think we've ever had. <laughs> that was really good. Um, I didn't know until uh, my test call with him that he was going to show us spiders at all. Um, so we were super lucky there. That was sick. Um, you say that every time. I mean, they're all so good. But like that was a really good podcast. Um, that spider was so cute. Do you guys, do you guys like them anymore? For those of you that were nervous about it or didn't want to watch a spider podcast. <sighs> yes. Okay, that's a lot of yeses. That's, that's, I'll take those yeses. And if you said no, you're still here. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here. Okay. Also $1,306 for Xerxes is incredible. Um, I really, really appreciate the representation for invertebrates and conservation because we need more of that. Um, today was a really good day for that. Rex with the five dollars, thank you so much. Oh my, this little spider in the lo in the logo. I didn't even see it. That's so cute. Has it been there the whole time? How have I not noticed that? Did it just show up? <laughs> Lock is so cute. Thank you. Um, are you ready for a quiz? Here's how the quiz works. 
if uh, if you're just getting here. There is a quiz based on the stuff that we talked about here today. You will not lose anything if you don't do well. Don't worry, it's not that high of stakes. But if you get, there are five questions, 20 seconds per question. If you get them the most correct, the fastest, then you get the most points. Whoever gets the most points at the end of the quiz either gets a gifted sub to my channel if you're not already subbed to my channel, or I'll gift you a sub to a channel of your choice. Or if you don't want that, I can donate an extra $5 to uh, Xerxes, okay? Um, you have to click allow access. Grant access on PC or on mobile, um, quiz kit, manage access. If you don't do that chat, I will not be able to see your username and it'll just say contestant number, blah, 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 and then you can't win. So it's not really, you shouldn't do that. You should, you should manage access. Viz just uh, linked an image. I really hope that's an actual image. Yeah, okay. Viz just linked an image of how to do that if you're new here. Um, that's how it works. I'm gonna do this within, no, I didn't. Can you at least, do you both have to be, does your color, does it, yellow, both of you? Can one of you pick like green or something? Gosh, okay. Um, I'm gonna do this before the song is over, okay? I have a quiz set up, here we go. Three, two, one. Manage access. for the quiz. Here we go. No, it's okay. Chat, it's okay if you don't do all in the quiz, but you won't get your PhD today. Like, Sebastian. <laughs> okay, here we go. Points. Five questions, 20 seconds per question. Ow! You can get your PhD in the future, just not right now. Um, 
Start game. Here we go. How many eyes do jumping spiders have? Do they have six eyes, 20 eyes, four eyes, or eight eyes? Don't put the answer in chat. That's not how the quiz works. Don't, don't, put, don't type the answer. Hold. Okay, the the correct answer is that was Matt's friend Joe is eight. Most of you got that right. Congratulations. Joe who? Next question. Oh, show scores. Sorry. Who got that the who got that right the fastest? Contestant number 1437. Manage access. Please. Please. You can't win if you don't do it, okay? <laughs> this is never... All right, next question. Who's contestant number 1437? Which two eyes of a jumping spider can see color? The two eyes on the side of their head, two eyes on the back of their head, the two eyes on the front of their head, or none of the eyes, because jumping spiders can't see colors. The correct answer is it's waiting for players. The correct answer is the front two eyes. Two hundred and seventeen people got that right. That was in the very beginning of the podcast, so that's that's a lot to remember. But good job to those people. Um, Yo, Ms. Kef, congratulations. You got that right the fastest. But Cheese is in the lead. Next question. How far can jumping spiders jump? Is it about 10 times the length of their own body, 40 times the length of their own body, 5 times the length of their own body, or 20 times the length of their own body? The correct answer is 40 times the length of their own body, which is nuts. Oh no, Courtney misclicked. Sorry, Courtney. <laughs> 222 people got that correct. Well done. Who got that right the fastest? The wizard. <laughs> the wizard. Well done. Dan in close second, Rob in third. Next question. Two more questions. What, spiders pr what spider produces the second strongest web? Is it the jumping spider? The fishing spider? Golden orb weaver? Or Chilean rosehair tarantula? I see a lot of easy claps. actually easy <laughs> i'm glad i'm okay let's see i got it wrong easy clap for once what's up um 263 people got that correct the correct answer is golden orb weaver has the second strongest web i did the second strongest because I, he wasn't completely sure what the first strongest was and i didn't want to scam you guys um, the person who got that the most correct, or the fastest, was XT449. Well done. So far, Cheese is in the lead. Will is in second. Holy cow. Okay. Um, Dirac in third, Spinning Squid in fourth, The Wizard in fifth. Last question. Is Will going to take the lead? Last question. How long do jumping spiders live in captivity? Do they live six months, 10 years, one to two years, or three to five years? Low luck guest. Camino is cheating. 
He said, chat, tell me. Bernie said a bad word because he got it wrong. The correct answer is one to two years in captivity. 217 people got that correct. And the winner of the quiz for podcast number 29 for this week is... Thermit. Thermit 3 with 96k. The wizard in close second. Thermit. Therm... The... The arm... I don't know how to say it. Is... Are you here? Well, he has to be here. Is he a sub? I don't know what color he is. I cannot see anything. Uh... Thermite. It's a three. He's not a sub! Red name, not a sub. All right, Thermite. You're getting a gifted sub. Shut up, Maya, don't. I didn't have myself muted. Gift a sub to a specific viewer. How is, what is it? What is the, what is his name? Thermite. Therm thermit three. All right, here we go. Why can't I gift a? Why can't I gift a subscription? Sorry, a gift subscription to this channel is not available for this user. Somebody did it. What the heck? Okay, Botox. Thank you. Um, not your regular, de not your regular devil. Thank you for the Twitch Prime. Fifteen minutes ago, Rex. I said thank you for that. Thanks. Um, all right, Botox, thanks for the gifted sub. Congratulations, Thermite, you're, you're a sub to this channel. Um, <laughs> easy clap, too slow. All right, well, cool. Okay. Donate the five. Thermite, would you like a, a gifted sub to a different channel, or do you want me to donate an extra five dollars? Looking for a red name. Feather. Donate, white people happy. You got it, buddy. All right. Um, I will add an extra $5 to this total um, because I don't know if I can donate because this is going into my PayPal because they don't accept PayPal, so I have to do it with a card. So um, I'll, I'll do that five. So it'd be $1,316.01. Um, thank you guys. Tiger, thank you for the dollar. Your Draw My Life video was inspirational. I can't believe people are still watching that video. Thank you so much. Um, I, I liked, I went to Belize. I liked it. Go there. <laughs> Not right now though. Um, okay. This podcast was wonderful. Um, man, thank you for the six months. Uh, Rashton with $50. Hello? Oh, Locke added the five to the total. Okay. So this is our amount here. Um, when's the next podcast? Podcasts are on Fridays, but I will see you guys on Sunday because Sunday is my birthday. And so I'm doing my birthday stream uh, for American Eagle Foundation. Um, oh my gosh. Wait, American Eagle Foundation sent me a box for my birthday. Not a box, but like they sent me a box. For my birthday, but also just because they're wonderful. I'll show you. Hold on. I'll be, I'll be get some.
Hold. Look at what American Eagle Foundation sent me. They 1.4K secret with a 32. Thank you so much. They sent me a turkey vulture stuffed animal and an owl stuffed animal. Amazing. I now have like a collection of fun bird plushies. They sent me a pop socket that says American Eagle Foundation. They sent me a George button. Team George. This book, this notebook that I'm using as my notebook for the Wildlife Rehab Center, I have written out the Wildlife Rehabber Code of Ethics and have started drawing out anatomy for um, native wildlife in Texas. They sent me this pen that says I heart eagles and this glove that I can use for micros, like screech owls and stuff. Neat drawings, by the way. My handwriting isn't neat, but that's because I write in cursive, but it's legible. You just can't really. This? It's not that good. But that's not the point. It's so that I can, it's so that I, I get a hang of anatomy better. Um, okay. I can't read cursive and you spelled cursive C-U-R-S-E-V. Okay. So chat, that's the end of the podcast. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for the donations. We're at $1,400 for Xerxes, which is fantastic. Um, say the line. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we, we briefly touched on it when I was talking to him. Twitch is an untapped reservoir for doing good things. And I am so glad that I found this platform to do good things. Um, it's nuts that, that, that we had so many viewers today and that so many people were, were like interested in what he was talking about with spiders. Cause most people just say spiders like Daniels, you know? Um, so good stuff. Uh, I'm really, I'm really pleased with that. How old will you be on Sunday? Uh, 22. Um, but I also, I talked to Matt about my birthday and my stream. I don't know that I want to do an IRL to a desktop. I may just do a stream at Matt's place, um, with everybody because, uh, I don't know. We just, we didn't really know how to do the IRL, whatever. Um, and like switching it and I don't know. So I think, I think I'll just do a stream at Matt's place, uh, for my birthday. I don't really know what we're going to do. Um, we might bake or something. What time is it going to be? Um, I don't know, like in the early evening, like 3 PM, 4 PM this time. Is that okay? That's not evening. You're right. That's, that's like early or that's afternoon. Um, yes, that's fine. That's late. EU. Early is best for you. Yeah, but I want to, I want to, um, cause I don't want to celebrate my birthday after the stream. I want to do it before. Cause I don't know how long the stream's going to go, you know? Um, so I'm thinking like three or four, but I don't know yet. I'll, I'll let you guys know when it gets closer. Um, and yeah, so I, I think that we'll just do a stream at Matt's house and we'll do something fun or interesting or we'll hang out or whatever. And all the money raised is going to American Eagle Foundation. Y'all already know it's for their adopt a bird program. Um, so the milestones will be, uh, for, for adopting specific birds from the program. We're also going to call Connor in at some point. Um, and he's going to talk to us and maybe, maybe show us, uh, some birds or we'll, or we'll figure something out there. So yeah. Um, I'm going to host, uh, should I raid Ryan back? Ryan Higa. Wait, no, I hosted him last time. No, I didn't. He hosted me. Okay. I'll raid him. Um, 
Okay, so thank you guys for watching today. That I really, really enjoyed that stream. Um, and it also went on for a really long time. I'm not going to apologize for that. Why would I apologize for that? I almost did. Um, it was just a good conversation. I just really liked talking to him. He was wonderful, and he has fantastic energy, and those make for the best guests, so that was great. Um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, go say hi to Ryan. I watched part of his VOD the other day, and he said that for some reason, he was on this failure Reddit um, because of something that I did or because of a Maya thing. And he doesn't get how that's a failure, but he said, I guess, thank you for the free exposure. <laughs> so he, he doesn't know. <laughs> so go be nice to him. Um, good guy. Um, one of my favorite cousins for sure. So yeah, I'll see you guys on Sunday for my birthday stream. You're the best. Thank you. Okay. I feel like I should wait longer for the raid. Da -da 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 -da. Like, do I have to wait until the raid is... Or does it not matter? Can you just, like, raid and then... No? Okay, bye! See you on Sunday!